Hey everybody, it's Eric Grenier and Philippe J. Fournier. We're here for the election night special live stream uh, for this uh, uh, provincial election in Manitoba. Uh, Philippe, how are you doing? Very glad to be with you uh, tonight, Eric. Uh, I think it's going to be a fun one. Uh, I got uh, my I got my candy, I got my drink, uh, my cats are locked out, so the, we won't have any distractions tonight. Looking forward to this. I didn't take any candy. That's a good idea. Uh, so yeah, so I'll give you everybody, first off, we can see you in the chat, so you can tell us if, if everything sounds all right and looks all right. Uh, that's always the first thing to do. Uh, so what you see in the screen, you have me and Philip, of course. Uh, over on the left, you have the CBC, Manitoba CBC uh, results page, which is a very functional and nice looking page. So I have it up there and we'll follow it there. And uh, below us, you see that uh, we're looking at uh, the logo for the numbers and Les Shift. These are our podcasts. We got links in the show description uh, for the podcast where you can go subscribe. You can go find it on your podcast. Links to both of our sites, you could subscribe to those. Uh, we'd appreciate that. We also have a link to the Elections Manitoba website so you can go follow the results there if you like. Um, so yeah, so for the next little while, don't know how long, we'll see how, uh, how long it'll take for the votes to come in. We'll chat about the Manitoba election. Uh, we'll take and try to answer any of the questions that you have in the chat. Uh, Philip, how are you feeling about this this one? I know you always get a little nervous on election night because of the because of the projections. I, I do because I know I will eat a lot of crap uh, from uh, all sides uh, when I get it wrong. I will say this though: this is something that I've mentioned at every election that I've covered. Uh, if the polls are wrong. It's not our fault. I mean, it's okay. People will be mad. It's okay. But if the polls are wrong, it's not our fault. If the polls are right or close, and I'm wrong, that's on me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, I have to say I'm a little nervous because it would just take five or six seats to go weird tonight to completely change the outcome of this election. Uh, I, I, if people could go to my, can go to my website, I updated early today. I, on election day, I have this policy of not publishing my projections. Uh, it's not a law, but uh, it's like not publishing polls on election day. I think it's just more respectful. But I did make an update early this morning, and uh, my numbers were 31 for the NDP, 24 for the PCs, and the Liberals were at two. The ranges. Uh, went from liberal, went from zero, it's possible they went zero, all the way to three. Uh, for the for the PCs, uh, let me just put it up here like an idiot. I, uh, I actually I wrote have, it down. You have 18 to 29. 18 to 29. I'm prepared. Yeah, I come prepared. <laughs> clearly. But I have to say, though, the 18 to 29, some say, yeah, it's obvious it's a big bracket, but it's a Gaussian curve, right? It's mm -hmm. a normal distribution. So the, the extremes are not as likely as the values near the middle. And uh, as for the, the NDP, I think the lowest, what is the lowest for the NDP? The worst case scenario would be 26. Um, Which is just like 26 would probably be what, 26? Uh, yeah, 26 NDP, two liberal, 28 PC. And so, or three liberal and 28 PC. Yeah. So you're talking about a minority government. That's what is, these kinds of elections are the most nerve wracking when it's, the polls are kind of obvious that a party should win. But if yeah. just they're off just by a little bit, then it means it could be really close in the seat count. It's not like we're going into a night where it's a 20 point lead for one party. That's right. And so even if the polls are off by 10 points, it won't matter. This is right. one where they're ahead by five to 10, depending on the poll, if you're kind of like averaging it out and expanding it a little bit with the margin of error. Uh, and if it ends up being five to Plus three, three. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Then, yeah. then it gets to be a little uh, concerning. Uh, so if the NDP, if, Eric, if the NDP wins 26, that probably means that the Liberals had a good night and yeah. kept all three, right? So this would mean we would have a stalemate at uh, uh, at the top of the legislature, which would be, I mean, for those who like drama, for those who don't live in Manitoba, who don't have any invested interest in this, it would be a fun, you know, it would be a fun situation. Chaotic kind of thing, yeah. But uh, we love chaos because that would mean an election probably next year. But yeah, uh, yeah. So. yeah, and like from what we've seen from the liberals, uh, a lot of people have said that in this campaign they've actually run to the left of the NDP. Like the NDP is more the centrist party in a way. So if it ends up being in a minority scenario, even if the PCs win more seats, then you could have one of those outcomes where uh, you could have the NDP and the liberals agreeing to work together and you know, and the PCs don't get to keep keep in power. Now, if the PCs do get their vote out, if we see that in the suburbs, especially uh, the NDP is not able to surge as much as, as some of the polls suggest that they could, 
then you could imagine a scenario where the PCs tick up to 29, 30 seats. Yeah. Uh, but then you got to name a speaker. Oh, and, you know, we see what's happening in the United States when, when it's close and you're trying to name a speaker. So uh, things can be a bit chaotic. So we'll see what's going to happen once the numbers start coming in. Uh, the last polls of the campaign. So we had three. And, of course, we had uh, trusty form research at the end of the night after I went to bed. That's right. Uh, so Main Street had it as 47% to 41% for the PCs. Research Co. had it 48% to the NDP to 39 for the PCs. And form was the one with the closer one, though the regionals actually yeah. had the NDP winning more seats than, than even you projected. Uh, 45% for the NDP, 41% for the PCs. So... Uh, that PC number is pretty consistent, right? It's been 39, 40, 41 in pretty much all the polls throughout the campaign. It's just that NDP number. Are they going to be at the lower end of the 40s yeah. or the higher end of the 40s? And I think that'll be the, uh, the f- deciding factor here. That forum poll, I mean, I don't want to dunk on forum. I, that's not what I do. I don't want to be snarky. But for those who listen to us right now, go to the website either my website or curtis frick's website who just signed on you just signed on hey curtis just uh, click on that link and look at the regionals right the regionals is winnipeg brandon and rest of manitoba and brandon has a sample size of 27. (laughs) so thank you for adding brandon (laughs) and your sample size 27 cases in a in a probabilistic poll is plus or minus 20% 20% of margin of error. And also, if you look at the numbers, the greens are at 0.4% in Brendan. How do you get 0.4% with a K, with a sample size of 27 respondents? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It's, 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 it was like, a weighted I, responses. So it's like half of a woman and a third of a 18 to 34 year old. <laughs> That's I, probably I, how they get there. I calculated it was 0.11 uh, of one person. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That, uh, that goes for the green. It was a very, uh, it was, yeah, it was a partial person. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens with these numbers uh, in terms of, of the, the result. One of the notes that I find really interesting, and I was looking at the, the kind of the background, all the polls have had the NDP over 40%. The NDP has never not formed a government when they hit at least 40% of the vote. Every time that they've had 40% since 1973, since 1973, before that, I think they did it once before that. But once they get to that 40% mark, they win. And part of it is, is because of the Liberals. Because uh, when you look at the last two results in 2019 and 2016, the Liberals had 14% of the vote. And the NDP can't really afford to have the, the Liberals that high. Uh, so the polling has put the Liberals down to around 10%. 12% was in the forum poll. Uh, yeah. That is one of the signs, I think, for the NDP that things are going pretty well because the Liberal vote is expected to be so so poor. Uh, we're getting a couple comments I saw about the, the Jean Talon by-election. We'll wait till, till we have time to kill, maybe. Uh, well, we may have time to kill soon because if the, the electronic numbers don't fill up. We'll, yeah. But we, we'll, talk, we'll talk about this. And if you want to hear more commentary about this, Ooh, please, promo. please subscribe to our podcast because, of course, it will be. You know, I have a lot of things to say about Jean Talon. I was on television last night discussing this, but the anchor cut me at some point. Of course, I was just because you were you were going on. on too long. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But I had three and a half minutes, and it was not enough. Now on our <laughs> podcast, we'll discuss this because I think it was really significant what happened last night in Jantano. But let's go. Let's focus on Manitoba. Tonight. Yeah. It's well, we got uh, we got caught, uh, one question about the 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 Sovereign North uh, Strategies poll that was put out during the middle of the campaign. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> the, the thing with that poster, like their numbers didn't seem all that out of step because Research Co. had a number that was more or less a tie. But I, I, I don't know who this poster is. There's no information on the website about who it, who runs it. And I mean, you, you don't you need at least a name. I do. All right. Do. Well, you do. But it's not it's uh, not publicly said on the website. And to uh, me, that's a bit no, of a problem. That's true. They keep their their cards close to their vest. Uh, it, their first polling was during the Alberta election. Now, of course, uh, because we're live streaming this, I, his name escaped me, but he was he was part of the Take Back Alberta group. Right. So he is associated with the, the you know the, the the right of the right in Alberta, but his work in Alberta seemed to be pretty good until he, he ended up with I think the worst poll uh, of the bunch uh, when you look at the, fi- the final polls. Uh, I did not add it to the projection because I asked for the cross tabs; uh, they were not on the website. And they never sent it to me. So 
I mean, you can't just say, we did a poll and here are the results. You have to show me the work. You have to show me the tables. I'm not saying they, they, they cheated or anything. It's just that if you want yeah. to be taken seriously, you have to show the details of your work. And they didn't. So. Yeah. And uh, so we got another question from, uh, and anyway, just to go back to that, at the time, there was a poll that also showed the PCs and the NDP tied, but most of the polls at the time uh, showed a bigger lead for the NDP. And then the last polls of the campaign we saw were on the side of that lead for the NDP. So we got a question from Patrick Quinn, who asks if the Liberals lose a seat, which I think is, it's, it's like a decent possibility to lose one or two, um, would it be Tyndall Park or St. Boniface? Uh, which, to me, I think... I think St. Boniface is probably the more one in danger. Even if Dougald Lamont is the leader, um, right. that is a former NDP seat, right? That used to be Greg yep. Selinger's seat. Uh, yep. Wabkanu went to St. Boniface at the end of the campaign. Um, to me, it looks like the NDP is targeting that seat more maybe than Tyndall Park. And Tyndall Park has been liberal for a little bit longer. So to me, it's St. Boniface, Tyndall Park, and then River Heights. And you look at the last two elections, uh, St. Boniface was the closest one of the three uh, liberal seats. Uh, so, I mean, I know there's usually a leader uh, bonus. Well, usually, often a leader uh, bonus. Um, I think I think the Sabadi Fast is the most likely one to flip, but we'll see. Hey, uh, tell uh, tell the, the viewers tonight, uh, what are you drinking? Oh, uh, this is uh, uh, responsibly uh, drunken. Uh, so everybody, if you're under 18 or 19 or 16 or whatever it is, um, when I was young, anyway, uh, it, it's it's a cider. It's a cider from Ireland. It's a uh, Magnus. I enjoy that. So. <clears throat> I am drinking right now vodka and soda, but I have rye getting cooled in the fridge for if uh, if this gets to be a long night or if things go bad um, or things. Well, if, th if things go bad, I may just go to bed. But yeah. no, I, I won't. I won't leave you. Of course, I won't Thank leave you. you. And uh, how many people do we have? Oh, one hundred and fifty-eight. That's pretty good. All Not right. Not too bad. Excellent. Uh, well, welcome. People. Invite your friends. Uh, get, let's. Uh, we're starting a party here. Okay, so um, still waiting on the first results. First results always take a little bit of time. This is usually the when we start to get some. So we'll see if um, if we're going to get some in the next couple of minutes. Um, Eric, let's yes. play right now. Okay. Over under. <laughs> Popular vote. Are you ready? Okay. The, the, the you just mentioned the polls in Manitoba. The, the final polls in Manitoba, the uh, the PCs range from 39 to 41, right? Over under 41. <laughs> I kind of think the smart money would be on over because the PCs probably going to beat their polls a bit when you look at how their turnout differential was between younger voters and older voters. Um, so I, I'm going to take the over, but I can, al I can also imagine a scenario where people at the end of this campaign sense smelled the the desperation that at least I sensed from some of the ads that we saw from the PCs. Oh, and when people sense that someone's a lose, losing, uh, there's not a lot of enthusiasm to go and vote for that party. So that's always a possibility. But I think the, the smarter money, the more likely result is an over. Yeah, me too. I'll take the over. Maybe not that by much, but uh, considering, I mean, the Liberals uh, don't have a full slate. The Greens, yeah. well, really don't have a full slate. They have so a, it's a minor party at this 13 out of... The, 13 out of yeah. 57. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so the, the possibility that uh, the, the PCs beat their polls by a point or two or three uh, is really there. So I'll take a D over also. It's uh, possible the, the liberals are going to underperform, right? Because yeah. uh, they're lacking a candidate in about, what, a tenth of the ridings? Yeah. Um, or not even even more than no, that. It's like 20% of the riding. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so a lot of people, especially at the end of the campaign, it starts to... Some people get figure out that there's no candidate in their riding, but there are still a lot of people who say they're going to vote for a party and they won't have the opportunity. Like the Greens were still managing 2% in some of the polls. There's no chance, I think, that they'll even be able to crack one with the amount of candidates they have, right? So there's some people that say they were going to vote for this party. They're going to go to the ballot box and they're going to find out, oops, can't vote for that candidate. And if they also don't know that they don't have a candidate in their own riding, they're probably not a person that's that likely to go out and vote in the first place. For the Greens to even have 1% tonight, they would have to average 4 or 5% in every riding they have a candidate in. That's not happening. Uh, and for the Liberals, I, I think it was 47. Somebody can correct me here. I think they had 47. Yeah, or, yeah, or 49. Yeah, Late, uh, high 40s of yeah. candidates. So there are voters that are like, oh, I'm a Liberal voter. There's no Liberal here. What am I going to do? So 
okay. One of the writings, uh, Selkirk, is is uh, yep. great. I do have the map, so I can try to find it on the map. Where's Selkirk? I can look at some of the writings, actually. I should do that. Um, Selkirk is just up here north of Winnipeg, and uh, that is one of the writings that is a straight blue on orange fight. There's no liberal. There's no green candidate. Uh, so that would give an advantage to the NDP because... Uh, obviously, the NDP would be more likely to be the second choice of liberals and greens than the PCs. Um, so, yeah, while I have the map here, uh, the focus there is go. primarily going to be on Winnipeg. Um, and the southern it, part of Winnipeg. Yeah. Especially, huh? And yeah. so for the PCs, their strength is in the south and the west. Um, and they have a couple of other seats at the outskirts that they're going to be trying to hold. But for the NDP, if they can take pretty much all the northeast and... Um, just the north, north, and and east of the of the city, win those suburbs. That'll probably be enough if they can pick up a few extra seats out in the rural areas, like uh, Brandon East would be a top one for them. Selkirk, I point out, Dauphin would be another one, and Interlake Gimli uh, seats that they would like to gain. They already hold the north; they hold the downtown area of Winnipeg, and uh, it's really a question of how many they can pick up. They need to pick up at least ten. Uh, is it 10? No, 11. 11. Eh? 11. 11 to get to 29 uh, seats. Although if they're picking up 10, they're probably ahead of the, the PCs, just in terms of how the math works. Um, so for them, it's really if they get to 10, they're in a minority government situation. If they get to 11, then they're in a majority. And beyond 11 seats uh, gain, then they're cushioning that majority. Uh, so that's really their focus tonight. And what a minority that would be. Wow. I, a minority like that, just uh, with the other party having two or three seats, that the one that holds a balance of power, that would be uh, that would be something. And, and there you have to have full attendance uh, yeah. in order to get anything passed. <laughs> um, Nobody can have uh, you can't have a, a flu or something. You have to show up to uh, to, to vote. Wow. So, so a question from uh, Nova Scotia. He says, uh, "Where do you think the impact of the desperation hail mary ad campaign will be noticeable?" Any areas that were really safe PC seats where we might see a bump in turnout doesn't help them win, though. Do you have any thoughts? Those ads were special. I mean, to tell the audience that, you know, it's not cool to vote for us, but when you're alone in a voting boot, you can, you know, you, nobody's going to watch you. You can put your ex next to PC candidate. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever seen that. First, no. first of all, for, out of a major party, I've, no, I don't think I've ever seen that. Um, it, it struck me, and the other, well, the the other, of course, the the, the one where stand firm on not uh, digging up uh, the landfill for well, this, this story. You know, this is not speaking to swing voters. This is speaking no. to yeah. the core PC voters. I'm assuming that they have internal polls, and maybe they saw, oh, oh our our voters are not turning out. Um, but uh, it, it really smells as desper desperation. I don't know if it'll work. We'll know tonight. But uh, if the PCs underperform tonight, I think those ads uh, a posteriori will be yeah. easily explained. It, it reminds you a little bit of potentially, assuming the PCs lose, it reminds you a little bit of the uh, barbaric cultural practices tip line that the, the Harper conservatives had in 2015. It was an idea that, that really jumped the shark and, and kind of showed that the party was kind of flailing about. And in that case, it was it was going against a lot of the work it had already done within uh, immigrant communities to try to get support for the conservatives. So it showed a, a, an extent, a degree of desperation that became obvious on election night when we saw the results. This one... And it left a mark, too. Yeah. It left a mark. Yeah. And they're still, they're still, uh, they're still paying for it. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, we're starting to get some results. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll save my thoughts for later. So we've got uh, 18 polls reporting in 13 different ridings. So we're still pretty early. Uh, so let's see what we got. Uh, we got a Thompson, which is NDP, as we'd expect. Uh, first result in Brandon East, uh, which is just a four-vote four lead. Stop the count. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then in, in Winnipeg, we have some from all over the place, but... Again, we're looking at probably just one or two polls. Oh, no, uh, Transcona, we got a lead of 120 votes for the NDP. Uh, Fort White, that would be, Obi Khan is, is uh, the incumbent there. That would be a shock, but the NDP is only up by, by seven votes. Saint Boniface, uh, NDP is leading. Uh, oh, yeah. Early, right. early returns, but yeah. 70 votes, uh, yeah. And then we've got one poll reporting, but uh, yeah, that would be, that'll be definitely one to watch. So, okay, we're off to the races here. 
Uh, you remember the by-election in Kirkfield Park? I think it was in the spring. Uh, the Liberals had done really well in that by-election. It threw me off a little bit. I think it was a surprise for many people, at least I talked to, even people in Manitoba uh, said there was a surprise. I, I, I wasn't sure if it was the PCs not turning out and the Liberals do. I mean, I, I don't know how to transpose that. Uh, by-election sometimes can really throw you off your off your game when you have strange results, right? But yeah. so far, at Kirkfield Park, a uh, small NDP lead against the PCs. The uh, Liberals are in third, distant third. Yeah, but the PCs won that just by narrow margin, right? So, yeah. 37, um, 34. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We did get a question. Uh, I don't know if you know this, because you look at the demographics uh, more than I do, but uh, Zach A was asking if, if Manitoba is a Francophone majority riding. I know St. Boniface is... The one with the most francophone. So I don't think it's a majority, is it? I don't. I don't remember majority. No. Yeah. Um, but I, it uh, is the one where it's all concentrated or primarily yeah. concentrated. Um, exactly. There's some in Saint River and some. Uh, I mean, where you see the liberals doing well, there's some francophones there. But majority, I. Sorry, don't quote me on this. Uh, I I don't remember seeing it in the in the in the files. So. Uh, so River Heights, we got some numbers there. Uh, there, uh, John Gerard, who's a former Manitoba Liberal leader, he's only head by 15 votes. Uh, so that's going to be, that was not one I thought would be that close. I thought that was a safer one um, than elsewhere. But uh, but yeah, so so far, it's 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 a bit too early to draw any conclusions, but no, nothing too shocking uh, to date. So we have now 17 ridings reporting. Um and there is uh, only 28 polls, so uh, we're still pretty pretty early on. Um, I saw a comment from uh, Dan Arnold. Dan Arnold is yeah. Here. Their writings that go liberal federally, but PCs have provincially. NDP need to swing a few of them. Have been aggressive there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, it is going to come down to. I think uh, some of these seats in 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 the south and, and the southwest of uh, of Winnipeg, because uh, on my site when I put up my analysis this morning, I had sort of the minimum path for uh, uh, twenty nine seats for the PCs, and it was pretty much the bottom, you know, the southern southwestern yeah. corner of of Winnipeg still blue, and the rest of it could go Liberal or NDP. Uh, so we'll see. Because if, if the NDP right now, they're leading in Fort White, again, only six votes, that would be a problem. If they're leading in Kirkfield Park, there it's by uh, 71 votes, still very small. But those are the kind of seats that the Conservatives should have to hold. Uh, we're told to look at Brandon uh, West. Brandon West. West. Uh, still got the PCs leading, uh, which is, I think, what we'd expect. West is yeah. the harder one for the NDP to take. And Brandon East... Uh, there, it's a four-vote lead for Len Eastleafson, which I don't think is how you pronounce it. I've heard other people pronounce it. Um, Eastleafson? Eastleafson. Yeah. Well, that's what it looks sorry like. If but... we, sorry if we... Uh... Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say the, the, the Glenn Simard, not Simard. You don't pronounce the D. Simard. Yeah. But well, to each his own. So we are still waiting for some more results. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, this is... Okay. Oh, someone said cool software, just uh, if, in case you're referring to the map. This is the map from the CBC Manitoba election results page. Uh, it's just an easy, well-designed and, and easy-to-use page. So that's why I have that up there. Uh, so this is a good opportunity to remind you that we got links to various things in the, in the show notes below, including both of our websites, links to our podcast. We'll have a new episode on Thursday. We'll talk about these results. Um, and uh, also a link to the Elections Manitoba website, if you want to look at the official results. Thank you. Thanks to all those who registered for our new podcast. It's a new project, the numbers. Uh, Eric and I so far have a lot of fun. We discuss uh, politics from all over the country, federal, provincial. Uh, we have a little game sometimes. We have a little draft. Like We had a draft of toss-up writings for the Manitoba yes. election, right? Uh, I'm looking forward to see who's going to win. So basically, we picked four writings each. Uh, and the, they're supposed to be the closest writings. And at the end of the night, we'll add up the margins of uh, of a victory for all those writings. The ones that has the, the, the smallest one wins. I and think I chose in Seine River, Selkirk, Riel, and Waverly. I think those are the ones I chose. So those are the ones I'll be keeping an eye on tonight. Riel was the one I thought, that oh, was close, three you votes. Were hedging. So yeah, there yeah, you go. Okay. Three That's votes in Riel. Oh, uh, by the way, are we calculating the margin of error per percentage or per absolute vote? Because I don't think we we settled that. 
Percentage, percentage. Percentage. Otherwise, okay. you would just take the ridings with the smallest amount of people. You'd game wow. the... <laughs> you'd game the thing. That's I how had, you do it. I had, I had Saint Boniface, Tendall Park, uh, Interlake, Gimli, Gimli mm-hmm. and the fourth one that I don't remember. Um, uh, which one was it? You? It was... Oh, my... It was Kirk, oh, Kirkfield Park. It was Kirkfield Park. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know it's Gimli because uh, my my grandfather was in the uh, was in the Air Force after the war. Oh. That's what he he and he managed to travel part of the world. He lived, lived in in Europe uh, at that uh, just after the war and lived in various parts in Canada. And so my mother actually grew spent some time in Gimli because there was an Air Force base there. He wasn't a pilot. He was like a, he managed the mechanics, but uh, that's important. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are plenty, plenty of uh, untasteful jokes that we could make here. Like, uh, did he, you know, who did he fight, right? But I will not go there. So <laughs> he fought. He was involved in the war. Although, uh, to be fair, he trained people. He trained people because he was bilingual, so he could train. Oh, that helps. He could train soldiers in English and French, and so they kept him on this side of the the ocean. Uh, well, if I may share a war story, I have one of my own. My grandfather, my uh, maternal grandfather, was born in 1921, uh, a family of 21 kids. 21, when he was 18, the war started. So what did he do? He went to work in the asbestos mines in, uh, in Tetford Mines to hide from the conscription. And then uh, to make sure he wouldn't be picked, he had ki- started to have kids, including in the years that followed my mother. So... Everything is everything. Tutti da tut, as we say, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, so there you go. Um, <laughs> okay, so we're we're starting to get the, the map in Winnipeg starting to fill in. There's not a lot of blue in it right now. The only Winnipeg seat that the Conservatives are leading in is Fort White, which used to be Brian Pallister's seat. Uh, before that, it was Hugh McFadden, who was the leader before him, and Obi Khan, who is well known because he used to play for the Blue Bombers, uh, oh, and he's a minister yeah, yeah, okay. and all this. And, but he's leading right now by just under 60 votes. So that's a pretty close one. There's only three polls reporting. Um, but the fact I, that the BCs aren't leading in, in some of these Winnipeg seats does not suggest that they're, they're off to you, a great start. I'll point to one specifically, Eric. Uh, Roblin in the uh, southwest corner. Uh, I had this as a, a pretty good PC seat. Uh, I don't think it was safe. It was likely. And I see right now it's close, but the NDP is leading in there. If the PCs cannot win Roblin, uh, it's a seat that uh, they uh, they had won, I think, by, uh, I want to say, 35 points or something. I don't have the numbers in front of me. Yeah, I have it. Uh, they had won this seat by 37 points. Uh, if they can hold on to Roblin, uh, they're going to get shot out of Winnipeg uh, almost entirely. So let's yeah. look forward to that. Let's yeah, yeah, that. that'll be a good one to see. Uh, McPhillips, uh, so some of the ones we're waiting on, McPhillips was one that the PCs won by the smallest margin, so that's the one you'd almost expect is almost certainly going to flip. Um, and then we have Kildonan River East, that was a target seat for the uh, for the NDP, St. John's was an NDP seat, Elmwood was an NDP seat, Concordia, Radisson is another one that they're looking to gain, the NDP from the PCs, uh, Le Gimaudière, that's another one, that's a PC seat that the NDP is targeting, Fort Richmond, uh, Waverly. So a lot of the writings they're still waiting on are the ones that are those target seats for the NDP, I think. So uh, Swan River is orange. Swan, oh, Swan River. 98, 98% of the vote for the NDP. That looks like a, that looks like a one box. It is one box. I have Swan River going blue again. That's Rick Wauchuk of the hmm. PCs. Is the, that was uh, not on my radar as a... In, my, in all likelihood, this is a... Like one one community, right? In, in all likelihood, this is an indigenous community um, yeah. that is uh, that votes overwhelmingly for the NDP, right? Um, so that's probably what that is. Hey, Keystone Party's got one. Oh, wait. There you go. Yeah, okay, wait, no. So, yeah, the, the northern ridings that the, the NDP win, uh, so it's it's Flin Flon, it's Thompson, it's Kwat Nuke, and the Pa Kamisak, I think, are the are the ones, right? And then everything below that tends to have been yep. PC. That's right. Uh, Dauphin and Interlake Gimli would be sort of the first ones that they could win moving south. Swan Maybe River wasn't one we had as a, as one that was likely for them to pick up. Uh, the other one's outside. So there's Brandon East, where we now see that the NDP is ahead, four votes. Again, this one could end up being a close one. Um, and uh, the other ones we, we saw with Selkirk, uh, Dauphin where 
right now the PCs are leading, but again, it's only one poll. So it depends on the community that's that's returning in. Uh, and we're still waiting for a... Tyndall Park yeah, would be one that I, I want to see. Um, Saint Boniface, let's look at Saint Boniface. Okay, and a small NDP lead, too early. Yeah, yeah. But still, I, the, the Liberals, if if they get reduced to... has the, Have the Liberals ever not won a single seat? Has that happened? I don't think so. Yeah, I, I think it did, but like um, a long time ago. Since oh, the... Okay. Yeah, since uh, 1995, they've always won between one and three seats. In the ninety, in the eighty-eight and ninety elections, that's when Sharon Carstairs was the leader, and the Liberals were were kind of surging and 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 did really well in the eighty-eight election. And then I think before that, they were in like that zero seat kind of scenario, going back to until uh, they 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 want, they used to form the government in the uh, in the forties and the fifties. Uh, so yeah, for them. The worst result uh, that they've ever had was 6.7% of the vote in 1981. So that would, I think they'll probably be able to beat that, but that's not a given. Uh, they've only dropped under 10% a couple of times, right? So if they, they fail to clear that mark this time, it's not going to be a good result for... When you get shut out also, it's so hard to come back. And we've seen what happened to those other liberal parties in the, in the Western provinces. Uh, you know, excluding the BC, uh, you know, strange labor, uh, st branding they have over mm. there, but you, you don't get back up nowadays. I think if you go back to, to the, go down to zero, so if they end up with, you're right though. Yeah, if they, if there isn't, uh, if they don't win a seat, there won't be a single liberal until uh, probably Thunder Bay, I guess, uh, going <laughs> from 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 west to east. Eh? So that's. Yeah, that's rough, rough going for them. Okay, so oh, liberals are at zero right now. Yeah, they NDP are. NDP 21, PCs 10. Uh, I'm guessing till, uh, River Heights went orange. Uh, yeah, it's really close, but yeah. So yeah, I'll wow. just take so St. Boniface, we're still only at two poles. So that hasn't changed. And River Heights is um, less than 60 votes. Uh, but we, and we only have three polls reporting. So but it is three of 17. So we're starting to get a little bit. Okay, we're over the 10% mark, at least there. We, we could see a mirror of the Alberta election where basically the NDP swallowed everybody else that is not conservative. Right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the liberals could still get around 10 percent, but it's, it's oof. you know, again, you don't get back up when you go down to zero and uh, the Greens nowhere to be found. Yeah. That Keystone party, uh, they were talking a big game a few months ago, but they only had a handful of candidates. Uh, so. Yeah, it's going to be uh, back to a two-party system, it looks. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll see. Yeah, it, you talked about the Greens. Uh, Wolseley was the riding where they did pretty good yeah. last time. Yeah. Uh, there's only one poll reporting, and Janine Gibson is running there. She's the leader, but right now she's only at 9%. This one poll, this is like a city, right? So it's not like there are polls yeah. in different communities. Uh, that one poll delivered 75% of the vote for the NDP, uh, and it's a big poll, too. So, uh, yeah, the Greens are going to have a rough night. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to them. I, like in the previous election, James Bedome was the leader. They got six percent of the vote. They came yeah. pretty close in Wolseley. They they were like marginally close in a second riding. Uh, Bedome went to the debates, and he had gone to the debates in 2016 as well. Um, and then it, I was just I didn't understand. I I watched uh, or I, I was following you know the the leadership race that they had earlier this year. The number of can uh, votes they had members was like in the 50s or 60s. Yeah. Total members. In, in, anyway, so I don't know what happened to the Green Party of Manitoba, but uh, this election is going to be a really rough one for them. Because it, it, that, that was one of the places where it looked like they could win a seat. You know, after yeah. the 2016 2019 election, it seemed like, well, maybe Wolseley and Winnipeg will be the next place to elect a, a Green MLA. And now they're going to be so far from it this time. Pol pol polarization uh, does, does this. I mean, when you you really don't want a party to 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 win uh, you become an anti-party party uh this is what happens uh, you know if if the greens agree with most policies that the ndp have and i know some greens on there i don't know if uh, i don't know if my friend uh, my, 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 my uh, hi, kyle is here but sorry but uh, you know if if you, the greens get five percent and the ndp lose the writing by two percent well then you could say, yeah, you split the vote. I know it's not, it, 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 you could blame the, the electoral system that we have, but before, before, you, uh, before you change the system, you have to beat the system. 
and uh, you know, again, if you if you want to have a Green Party in a province, the Green Party has to be different from other offers. Mm -hmm. And if the NDP here is close enough to the Greens, well, you know. So I see you smirking there, but you know what I mean there. I don't want to talk about our against our Green friends, but. This province is not one of theirs. I don't think it's not working no, out for them. No. The NDP is right now leading in 25 seats. Uh, so they're really close to that threshold. Now, obviously, some of these are going to swing around. Uh, but uh, it's 25 seats to 10 for the PCs. And we've got some results in most of the ridings in Winnipeg. There's only a few they're waiting for. And we're first elected to, huh? Yeah, that yeah. one's in Fort Gary. And um, no yeah, six polls already reporting, got 58% of the vote. Mark uh, Wazali, uh, Wazaliv, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, sorry. Um, yeah, so that's that's <laughs> one. And Tyndall Park, we got some results. So Cindy Lamaru, she's off to a good start. One poll reporting. She's got a lead of, of uh, nearly 100 votes. How did you pronounce her name? Uh, Lamaru. I know it's Lamaru. And maybe she, like, I, because... Uh, but <laughs> this is how it's pronounced. That's uh, that's how the family pronounces it. Because Kevin Lamaru is her father. I know, I know, and yeah. is uh, I think he's the house leader, the assistant house leader of, of the Liberals in 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 uh, in Parliament. But anyway, every time I've heard it pronounced, it's uh, Lamaru. So yeah, because because well, okay, yeah, I'm yeah. Not, that's, a, that's a, we don't fight over it. We won't fight over it. Does anybody ever pronounce your name Fournier? Yeah, and it sounds awful. It's yeah. Fournier. I mean, it's... it's, yeah. uh, it's like I, I don't understand why people make that mistake, because there was Marc Messier. Everybody knows Marc Messier. <laughs> and his name was spelled that way. So I, I don't understand why people ever make that mistake. But anyway. It's not Messier. Yeah. Or okay. Messier, Messier or something. But no. Anyway, so the, the... Like, you look at these results in Winnipeg so far. The PCs are only leading in Roblin, which is, as you mentioned... If they're not leading in Roblin, it's it's a route. It's a big problem. And they're only leading in Fort White, which again, former riding of the of the leader, right. uh, Brian Pallister. That's it. If if they don't flip some of these, Assiniboia is one of those ridings we haven't heard yet, but kind of expecting that the NDP can pick that up. Uh, Tuxedo, that's Heather Stevenson riding. Yeah. Probably going to win that. But um, I'm going to say yeah. this: my projection, my final projection, had three. Sure seats for the PCs in Winnipeg. It's Roblin, Tuxedo, and Fort White. And three more maybes, the toss-ups, Waverly, Seine River, and La Jumaudière. And even Seine River and La Jumaudière were like very close. They were toss-up, basically. And I think uh, the NDP is leading in both. Or La Jumaudière, I think maybe we haven't... Uh, we yeah, we haven't heard from uh, La Jumaudière yet. Yeah, okay. No, that's one What's of them we haven't heard from. In Seine River, what does it look like in Seine River? Saint, La Rivière Saint. It's well, it's a hundred votes. It's yeah. really close, but it poor NDP polls lead. reporting. But uh, but yeah, so um, you know the NDP does look like in a strong, like the PCs will need to start flipping some of these seats, right? Because yeah, yeah. Uh, you look at the ones that haven't reported yet, like McPhillips, um, Union Station, Fort Rouge. These are ridings that are going to go NDP, and that'll put them over. Uh, that'll put them into majority uh, position once once they re re start reporting in Notre Dame. That's another one. Um, these are NDP ridings that haven't yet reported. There's a number of the PC ridings that haven't reported yet in the rural areas, like Agassiz, uh, Midland, La Verandrie, Lac du Bonnet. Uh, so there's some ridings, like the PCs are probably going to be able to get over 20 at least. But uh, but even that, I don't know. These this This is not... I mean, we it's might be talking. Our, yeah, we might be talking ourselves into a hole if it's like the advance poll that's reporting first or not reporting and uh, but yeah. anything like that. But right now, it is looking pretty good for the NDP. They're at twenty-five seats; they only need twenty-nine to win. Uh, but but let's also remember, it's good for the NDP. But if they do win thirty or thirty-one, that's still not that safe for four years. Again, you can't have floor crossers, you can't have uh, resignations, you can't, I mean, it's, it's still going to be a close one, if unless they get, uh, you know, north of 33, maybe, yeah. seats, but... Uh, but, you know, if Heather Stevenson resigns, if she loses, again, let's not uh, get ahead of ourselves, that, that opens things up. We got oh, some... She, uh, she won't, though. Dingo has a few corrections for us. So local pronunciations, Philippe, don't get upset, but it's not uh, La Gimaudière, it's La Gimaudière. That and Lac de Bonnie. There you go. Lac de Bonnie? What that that one's a stretch to me. I don't know how it becomes Lac de Bonnie. What, but what's, la, what's the Lac de Bonnie? What's, uh, instead of Lac du Bonnet, I guess. Lac du Bonnet, oh, yeah, get out of here. Okay, so thank you. But La Gimaudière, I get it. 
but uh, but Black Zubonet, I mean. Well, you know what? It, but thank names you for are pronounced the us. ways it is. I mean, it's all right. It's all right. That's how it is. Um, <laughs> I always try to pronounce things correctly. For example, I learned when I went to Saskatchewan that it's Saskatchewan. It's not Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. You kind of oh. it's it's imagine that A is like a, a little Y or an I. Saskatchewan. I didn't think I didn't think there was uh, any um, controversy over that. Some like people say said, Saskatchewan. You, the thing is, the thing like is, the word French. is French. That's the thing. I mean, you said Dauphin earlier. I'm sorry. I'm gonna say Dauphin because <laughs> Dauphin is an actual French word, right? Mm. But it's it's okay. I mean, we won't we won't. It's not a fight we're having. Mm -hmm. It's uh, right. It's okay. But like du bonnet, it's uh, oh, yeah, like or like bonnet, Portage de Prairie, por, uh, por, Portage, 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 Portage de Prairie. Um, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. This is what this is how it happens. Different places pronounce things uh, differently. Um, so yes, we got an eight-point lead right now in the popular vote for the NDP. There are twenty-five seats, so we're waiting on a few ridings now to start reporting. They haven't Liberals reported at, yet. Liberals at fourteen percent here, huh? Hmm, okay, it's, thirteen. Uh, yeah, I wonder if it's because early votes. Well, and also a lot of the like, so the ridings that are reporting include Tyndall Park, River That's Heights, right. and Saint Boniface, and the rural ridings. A lot of them aren't reporting yet, right? So, um, so that's probably the reason there. But yeah, if they end up getting, they end up getting thirteen percent, and the NDP gets forty six percent, that would be pretty surprising. Uh, I don't think that's what happens usually. I don't want to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna thank our friend Dingo here. I didn't want to sound rude or anything, so thank you, Dingo. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna try my best. But uh, I know I have. It's late at night. I've been working hard uh, uh, lately. My English is very tired. When I get tired, my English is tired. So I, I say, I see la gimodière. I'm not going to think, oh, yeah, wait a second. It's la gimodière. No, it's, it's, I'm going to say la gimodière. It's okay. Yeah. This is uh, respect to different <laughs> cultures that we have here on this live stream. Uh, Nova Scotian makes a, f a good point, and one that I'm always very careful with. He says, in Newfoundland, there's a lot of French because the French used to have the yeah. the southern coast, right? And yeah. Yeah. Um, and so there's a lot of places that to me look like I think I know how to pronounce it, but I haven't heard them, so I don't know what they are. Um, so that's always uh, was it on fraught. CNN not too long ago? We heard uh, we heard uh, the anchors. So in Newfoundland, <laughs> yeah, so that's another <laughs> thing, that, right? right? You got to pronounce that correctly. <laughs> All right, it's time for candy, my friend. I'm eating. There you go. All right. Okay. Sorry for the sound. Yeah. Oh, try to open the bag right next to the mic if you can, just uh, so we can get the ASMR people uh, very excited. <laughs> um, so anyway, so the results do look kind of stuck at uh, 25 seats right now for the NDP, 14 for the PCs, and these seats in the kind of the eastern rural part of the province we haven't heard from in a while. And, you know, if we're playing the game of the path to the NDP right now, they need they need four seats, right? Uh, Concordia hasn't reported. They're going to win that. McPhillips hasn't reported. They're probably going to win that. Union Station hasn't reported. They'll probably win that. Fort Rouge. Assiniboya. Assiniboya, Notre Dame. There's enough there for them to be at least at 31 um, Porta Basque, yeah, that one I knew. Porta Basque. Saint Boniface, uh, the, uh, the the NDP lead has grown. Let's take a look at Saint Boniface. It's, uh, it's still early, five of twenty-eight, but uh, two hundred uh, votes. Yeah, it looks like uh, the uh, the Liberal leader uh, could be in trouble. Yeah, uh, and that that was the path to the NDP to take Liberal seats, the few Liberal seats, right? Yeah, and and like this. Uh, Dougal Lamont, he won a by-election when Greg Selinger resigned. And the fact that he won that seat was a kind of a big deal. It gave the Liberals, at the time, it bumped them up to four seats, if I'm not mistaken, and got them official party status in the legislature. Um, I think they had a floor. I can't recall, actually, the story, but it was because it was now it's 2014, 2015, or something like that. No, it was 2017, around there. Anyway, um, so if he lost, that would be a, a big blow. And then... Uh, you know, who takes over as their, their leader, assuming he doesn't stick around. Uh, because in River Heights, John Gerard, still trailing now by just about 60 votes. Only still got three votes, uh, three polls reporting. Cindy Lamoureux, who did uh, run against Dougal Lamont to be the leader of the Liberals, she would be presumably the, the, the likely person to Front take runner, over right? the party. But uh, not a party in... in Terrific shape. There was a moment when the NDP under Selinger was so unpopular that the Liberals were usually pulling ahead of the 
NDP, and there was, at the time, this is ahead of the 2016 election, a lot of hope that the Liberals could actually replace the NDP as the official opposition. Rana Bukhari was the leader then. Yeah. It was just a disastrous campaign from start to finish, and the Liberals ended up lucky to win three seats uh, in that one. So we'll see what happens with, with the Liberals here, and we'll keep an eye on St. Boniface for sure. But still 23 polls reporting, and uh, it is only 200 votes, so we can't... Uh, can't write Lamont's uh, political obituary just yet. Hang on here. I'm trying to look. What's uh, what are we missing? And what I what do I have wrong right now? If it stays like this, it's one river. We still haven't. We've only got one more poll. That's strange, huh? Yeah. Well, that's not strange. It's it's yeah. You're it right. depends. That's one of those where it really depends it's where it's coming from. It's a community. Yeah. 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 Uh, how's Brendan doing? Okay, uh, West PC and East uh, NDP. This is what I called. Uh, right now, I uh, you know I'll, I'll, the the wrong ones are only the toss ups so far. So that means the NDP is still on a good path. Yeah. And the popular vote, I see 46 for the NDP, 38 for the PCs, and 13 for the Liberals. You expect that Liberal number to go down a bit. I think both the PCs and NDP should go up a bit. Um, so if, at, to date, it doesn't look like the polls are going to miss it. Uh, yeah. Because if we end up, as you said, the Liberals dropping maybe three points as more of these polls start reporting, and it goes you know, two points to the NDP, one point to yeah. the PCs, you end up somewhere around 47, 39 or 46, 40. That'll be exactly where the polls are. And it'll actually be a bit of a reversion to where things often, where they were at the, if you look at the 2011 election, uh, the NDP at 46%, PCs at 44. In 2007, the NDP at 48%, PCs at 38. That kind of area is generally where things are when the PCs lose, when the NDP wins. Uh, but that's the 2011 election to me is one of the cases of really good vote efficiency. Yeah. The uh, NDP had a, a lead of uh, two and a half points and won 37 seats. And like, what would they have to be at in this campaign to win 37 seats? They'd have to be up by 10, 12, 13, maybe. They would have to have much better numbers outside, outside of Winnipeg. Uh, and it looks right now, I mean, again, if the polls are correct, Outside of the of the capital city, uh, the NIMDP will probably lose the popular vote by ten to fifteen points, maybe a little more. Um, to win to win thirty seven, uh, you need you need the Brandons. You, yeah, yeah. And the uh, PCs get pushed out of Winnipeg almost entirely. Entirely. Uh, but, yeah. uh, Michael made a good point here. Two of the ridings we're waiting to report are Kiwatanuk and the Pawakamisak, which we know are going to go NDP. Uh, which bumps them up to 27. If I you mean, take, you take away Swan River, though, we expect this to that's be PC. True. That's yeah. true. So then, uh, so you know, it's it's right now. It's looking to me like it'll be hard for the PCs to turn this around. It, it, let's let's just put it this way: both of us have watched lots of elections. To see these numbers flip by the end of the night would be like a hell of a thing. Yeah. Exactly. So let's just put it there. That's we're not going to make a call just yet. No, I don't no. know. No. Okay. I, I, Alberta, I know I went too fast. I, it was the right call, but it was too fast. I know it. When I went to bed. You just wanted uh, to go to bed. Well, the thing is, <laughs> here's what happened. Of course, I was hyper. I mean, when you do this kind of live stream, it, you know, the adrenaline is rushing and I had some alcohol in me as well. And the, I went to bed and, of course, I couldn't sleep. So what did I do? I picked up my phone and looked at the numbers and the NDP had tightened it up. I was like, oh, my God, just imagine I went to bed all confident right? <laughs> and I wake up in the morning. Oh, my God. NDP pulls the upset with 44 seats. Uh, I, I think I would shut down my site. I would uh, I would be out. I would uh, yeah. I would never show my face again. I've had a couple of times when that happened. I go to bed. My numbers are bang on. And I wake up <laughs> and two seats like flipped. I'm like, come on. <laughs> no one needed to do that. All right. I think we have our first elected, at least according to the CBC uh, PC that's in Lakeside. Trevor King, uh, only five polls reporting, but he's got 76% of the vote. He'll probably be fine. And we got two NDP ones, uh, so Fort Gary, we'd already mentioned, and the other one being uh, St. Vital. That's Jamie Moses. Um, hey, we talked about pronunciation. Assiniboya. Assiniboya? Yeah. As, en français, Assiniboine, la rivière Assiniboine. 
Oh. So it's, yeah, no, it's, it's almost the same. It's always the same. So we, we can agree here. There's, right. there's common ground. Yeah. There well, I assume this is based on a, uh, a local indigenous name. But um, si la tendance se maintient. Yeah, Martin, uh, I'll probably say it. Thank you. I usually, I, I use my, the, 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 the honor of uh, I've seen enough. Hmm. Uh, I, I started using this. J'en ai vu assez. I, I, I like to right. say it. J'en ai vu assez. That, isn't that the line of uh, Wasserman, yeah. I think it is? I, yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm Co- honoring it by saying the eh? French version. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I think we're getting close to there. But the thing is, when you say, see the tendance to say, don't you have to kind of like lean in and, you know, just be a little, yeah. See the tendance to yeah. 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 <laughs> Pull one octave low, lower too. So. Yeah, yeah. He was good. He was good. Um, oh, he was the best. Yeah. Uh, all right. So. I mean, La Gima we... Dier is showing. Uh, La Gima, or whatever it is. La Gima Dier. La Gima Day. Oh, oh no, no, it's not. Sorry. Which one was it's it? the wrong one. Call. South Day. I, I mistake with for South Day. Yeah. We're still waiting on uh, La Gima Dier, uh, as, as it was pronounced. Concordia, Union Station. So Concordia, Union Station were NDP seats. Notre Dame was an NDP seat. And so that's three right there. So we're not expecting to lose those. And the ones in the north, Kiwatnuk and the Pa Kamisak, that puts them at five, which puts them at 29. But, and because now they're not winning Swan River anymore. I'll, oh, no. Okay. Because I'll say Southdale right now is pale blue. I have it as an orange. I have it as a pickup. So we'll hmm. see. Uh, but yeah, the NDP is at 26 right now, getting really close. Yeah, Southdale was, so I wrote down the ones, these are the ridings that the PCs won by less than 10 points. Yeah. And the swing we we saw in, in Winnipeg was at least... At least 15, right? At least 15 and, and up to like 25. Uh, so they were McPhillips, Southdale, Rossmere, Dauphin, Cinnaboya, and Riel. Yeah. Um, and so that's six seats. So that wouldn't be enough. That would put them up to uh, 24 uh, if the NDP flipped those and kept everything else they had. But yeah, Southdale... Uh, was one of the ones that we kind of expected would be an easier win for the NDP. And uh, right now, the and the NDP, just as I was looking at it, moved into the lead. So there you go. Kiwatsinuk. Yeah. Kiwatsinuk. Still waiting on that the, one. The Pass Kamisak. Kami, the Pass Kamisak? Yeah. The Pass Kamisak. Uh, so those two are, are definitely NDP seats. Um, uh, I'm feeling... Okay, I'll, I'll still hold on, but... Uh, we're leaning. We're leaning towards a call, I think I think is safe to say. Dauphin is, uh, there's an 11 vote difference right now. It's a two, uh, two uh, candidate uh, riding, only the PCs and the NDP, and it's 50 to 50%. Yeah, uh, that's one of those where it really matters where the vote's coming in, right? Oh, yeah. Because uh, oh, that's yeah. a big riding with lots of little towns in it and that kind of thing, right? Uh, the other ones, the rural ones, Outside Winnipeg, we were expecting the NDP. Brandon East, not exactly rural, but uh, the NDP is leading there by just under 200 votes. Um, so that looks likely to flip over. Um, aside from that, we were thinking Selkirk. We haven't heard from Selkirk yet, and that's a uh, NDP PC race. Uh, what was the other one? Interlake Gimli. Um, does yep. not look like it's going to be that close. Does not look like it's going to be that close. 12-point lead. I have it as blue. 12th yeah. point, huh? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That one seemed to be more of a reach. It was, to me, it was Brandon East, Selkirk, and Dauphin, and then it would be Interlake Gimli. That was the fourth kind of rural pickup they could pick up. Um, and as you mentioned, Dauphin, Dauphin's very close, and Selkirk we haven't heard much of yet. Uh, so, wow. yeah. This, but, you know, this is, this is going to be a close one. Do you think? Well, thing is, again, a majority, when you, if the threshold for majority is 29, and you get 31. I'm sorry, that's a close one. You win a majority, but that's a close one. I mean, it's you're you're just two seats away from losing your majority. So yeah. Um, there was a question, uh, uh, Kayabash, about the bad campaign the the Liberals had in 2016. I can't remember the details, but it was like on the first day they had to drop. Okay, if I can remember that, like they had the first day of that campaign. I, I followed that one really closely. I remember um, the Liberals had to eliminate a handful of their candidates because if they didn't vet them correctly oh. and um they had an issue i think with their platform coming out anyway they just had a lot of issues and it, it 
I, I just remember that it was a very bad campaign. I'd have to go back and remind myself. But uh, it, they started that campaign above 20%. And they ended it at 14. Um, so, and they were like at that point, they were hoping to win maybe five, six, seven, eight seats. Yeah. Um, and instead, they ended up with just the three that they they won in that, and they they currently hold. But you know, we're still looking at Winnipeg. I am at least. You only got three yeah, seats right now. Tuxedo, Roblin, and Fort White are the only ones in Winnipeg that are PCs. So Obi Khan, leading by 400 votes. Uh, so he, you know, that's looking a bit better. Is up by 12 points. Heather Stephenson finally got some results for her. She's only up by four votes. Oh, Two wow. polls reporting. Oh, okay. okay, okay. Yeah. That one's one of the writings, though, that, um, you know, in a bad, if things go badly for the PCs, it's not a it's not a sure thing. And for a leader, it's a blessing. Might as well lose yeah. your seat and you go in the sunset, right? Because Unless otherwise... you do like Jim Prentice and resign your seat before the count's over and they have to hold another by-election because the uh, result was voided. That was yeah, a weird one. I remember. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, I didn't realize that either. I thought it was just a formality, but he had literally, because he had said that night that he was not going to take it, it was like the, the result didn't count, and they had to hold another. He never was. A, he he never resigned because he wasn't real. He wasn't considered reelected. It was it was a bizarre he thing. He quit right there. Wow. Yeah. Um, right. Anyway, the late Jim Prentice. So. Um, yeah. So. Died. Yeah. 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 That was a plane crash. Right? Not the, and you know, not the only Alberta Liberal um, Party leader to die in a plane crash. Uh, Rachel Notley's father, Grant Notley, also passed away in a plane crash uh, in the 1980s. So there you go. Be careful if you're a party leader in, in NDP and you're uh, in Alberta and you're flying. Better drive. I feel a quiz here. Yeah. Kidding, yes. kidding, kidding. The wor- yeah, we'll do a Halloween <laughs> quiz talking about past party leaders and their... For those who don't know, we have a quiz yeah. on the on the numbers podcast, uh, and so far uh, Eric is one and one, but doing very well. And by the way, I have a new I have a new format for you uh, okay. soon. I'm working on it. It's not going to be this week though, but I have a new format because okay. I know you know it, it. You know your history, right? You're already shaking up the format though. That's uh, no, no, no. I'm going. I'm going. You're going to bring gonna in go some into, guests, and it's it's going to go into rotation. So oh, okay. It's gonna There's a plan. plan. There's a whole yeah, plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a whole plan. Okay, so we're at 266 polls reporting. Uh, what's the percentage of that? I got my I handy 40, calculator. 45% for the NDP, 41% for the PCs, and just tw- under 12% for the Liberals. It's, that popular vote's getting closer, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It looks... Uh, I mean, it would be funny if Farham was the closest popular vote, but they would completely... I mean, there's, the Farham seat count did not make any sense. Uh, I, I what did they the have? They had 36 or 37, 30, didn't they? 36 for the NDP. And yeah. uh, I mean, it, I'm not saying it can't happen, but it's it's the numbers did not justify that. But uh, yeah. anyway. We'll see where it ends up because we're still waiting on uh, how many polls now are we? How many? So we've got uh, 20, uh, still got nine ridings to report. Two of them are NDP ridings, uh, two of them are PC ridings, and then the other. One, two, three, four, five are either NDP or, or close PC NDP riding. So um, as more of these polls kind of report, I'm not sure if the PCs will close the gap in the in the, in, in the vote. Uh, but, you know, we're getting at the point where it is still kind of close in the seat count, right? 21 is kind of the floor for the PCs. Uh, it's hard to imagine them getting less than 21. Okay, well, the Lac du Bonnet has, not, uh, has no results and they should go PC. Midland has no re- results and it should go PC, so that would be twenty-three. Yep. What else? Uh, that could be it. That could be it, based on that what's left to report, yeah. unless some of these flip. Uh, so let's look at some of the ones. Actually, the they have a close race thing here. So Kildonan River East, the NDP is leading by just seven votes, so that could flip any direction. Do- Dauphin, the PCs are only had by eleven. So that kind of cancels that out. But then after that, we start to get to bigger margins. We got 97 votes in Kirkfield Park for the NDP, 57 in Riel, 55 in Southdale, and in Roblin, just 121 for the PCs. So, wow. Uh, wow. And Roblin in, tu- in Tuxedo, like Tuxedo, Heather Sevenson's only head by four votes. No, it's only two polls reporting, I believe. Yeah. So we'll have to wait on that. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's interesting. I was listening to... Uh, Nigan and the Lone Ranger podcast with Dan Lett and, and Nigan Sinclair 
uh, and they were kind of giving an assessment of the Tory campaign. They were pretty rough on it, but um, it's kind of how the campaign felt. But they made they were making the point, and it, it's an interesting one that Heather Stephenson, ahead of this campaign, was was kind of leaning more towards the progressive in the progressive conservative side, and then during the campaign went Turned pretty dark. hard on the conservative side, uh, and in, perhaps even f- further than the conservative side, like. Um, which is just an interesting kind of shift that they decided to make because it was during the summer that they were doing pretty well. Uh, yeah. Some of the polls are starting to show a close race, a tie, and uh, the and turn no, they take, it's not clear why. And no serious party to the right of the PC that would challenge yeah. that. I mean, you would, you would think you would play the, the field if you have like a PPC type uh, party going after you. But again, the Keystone has only a handful of, uh, of candidates. And I think uh, I saw somebody comment in Turtle Mountain, um, Turtle Mountain in a corner, right? The south, in a, um, I think they have 20% of the vote, the Keystone. Uh, Turtle party. Mountain, yeah. Turtle Mountain, yeah. Yeah, yeah the La Keystone. Montagne tor- La Montagne aux Tortues. No, yeah. no, the Turtle Mountain, I respect And that. that's Kevin Friesen, that's the, uh, the leader of the Keystone party. Um, but yeah, that's the kind of area, like, you know, you look at where the PPC does well, um, you know, that would be in a seat like Borderland. And the Keystone Party doesn't have a candidate there. So anyway, they, they really, it almost seems like the PCs were expecting the Keystone Party to have more candidates and plan their campaign yeah. based around that. Because uh, they really didn't need to go that hard. Um, you know, like one of the, you know, they, they, they went on the uh, parental rights issue kind of thing. Uh, it seemed to be very much designed on trying to get their people out. And it. it if if they end up squeaking by in the in the seat count, it'll turn out to have been the smart political strategy because it may be yeah. their only path to re-election was to eke out each and every tiny seat that they could and get every vote that they could to squeeze out of it. But um, if it doesn't work, I mean, there will be some lessons here because we know that, uh, you know, Blaine Higgs, for example, yeah. Scott Moe, following some of, the, some, some of the same playbook and, um, you know... There was talk that maybe Blaine Higgs was going to wait to see these results because it might give him some indication of whether his plan will work for his own campaign. So that's twice he would have violated the uh, fixed election date law, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's supposed to be... Three strikes are 24. out, though. I think it's two. You can do it twice. The third time, you can't. By the way, I know it's uh, it's still early. I don't. Uh, I see 309 polls reporting out of 1,400. Look at that popular vote. Yeah, forty-five to forty-one point five. Uh, it's getting closer. Although I mean, the seat count—it really looks like the NDP's got this. But the, yeah. suddenly, the the popular vote is much closer. So that means that the PC is really doing well outside of the city. Uh, yeah, perhaps far more than we expected. Yeah, uh, the proper the, the proportional swing here may be a hindrance uh, to the model. But because uh, look, if we're looking at the seats that haven't reported that we know are going to go in a direction. We have Concordia, we have Kiwatnuk, and we have the PAC, Kimasak. Those are NDP seats. Uh, so that sh- would bump them up to 31. And the PCs have Midland and Lac du Bonnie, as everybody's Lac telling du us. Lac du Bonnie. Lac du Bonnie. Oh, there you go. It just showed up on my map. Lac du Bonnie. It's blue now. Okay. Okay, yeah. But anyway, so the NDP does seem to have... So the, the PCs, we need to flip some of these close seats, like Kildonan River East, 21 votes. Kirkfield Park, 97 votes. Riel, 57 votes. Southdale, 102 votes. If those flip, um, then there's a possibility that uh, that the, the the NDP doesn't get to the 31 that they should be on track for. At, at, th- at this point, I think it's safe to say the NDP will win the most seats. Um, yeah, that seems safe to say. Yeah, but uh, but a majority. Let's wait. But it it looks like the NDP has got at least a plurality of the seats. Yeah, I think that's probably true, because if the Liberals, let's see, because in St. Boniface, Duald Lamont is, I don't think yeah. he's winning this. He's, he's um, in trouble. He's in he's trouble. quite a ways back. River Heights. Uh, again, though, I'm not sure I'm, if the advance poll is, is first or last, and if that benefits one party or the other, you never know. And then Tyndall Park, Cindy Lamaru seems to be okay. She's up by about 300 votes. She's going to be a liberal leader. She's going to be, if, if she is by the default. only liberal MA, I mean, she, she would have yeah. to be. And then River Heights, John Gerard, yeah, he's he's been he's been there forever. He was the leader. Uh, I think he was leader since in from 1999 to 2011. Those elections, I think it was those. He's still there. Um, he's trailing by just under 300 votes, and about half the polls are reporting. So, 
you know, it's a close race. It's six points, but, uh, you know, that could be rough. So if the Liberals only have one, um, to win more seats, the, what would it be? You need 29. So you know, imagine a 20, 20, 28, 28, 28, 28 one. Yeah. Oh. Oh. yeah. My heart, 28, yeah. 28, one. <laughs> Madame Lamoureux becomes just the most important. Yeah. Well, there was that, that a little bit like the result in Yukon. If uh, yep. when was it in twenty one? When the was it a coin flip? Yeah, it was a literal coin flip. Yeah, liberals right. and the Yukon party tied in the seats, wow. and then there was a coin flip because there was a tie in the other riding, a literal tie after recounts, and they flipped a coin. A tie occurred in Quebec. I think it was in my teenage years. Uh, you know what they do in Quebec in case of a tie? There was, a, 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 I think, multiple recounts, and it was a literal tie. Is it a Putin eating contest? or No. no. <laughs> Although, I would watch that, put that on pay-per-view or something. But no, it was you just redo the election. And it's not only the two, everybody can right. just show up. You just redo it. So Yeah, what are the I guess that kind of makes sense. But I mean, that, that's got to benefit the governing party a, a hell of oh, a lot. Absolutely. But anyway, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you look at that popular vote, it is interesting. It's now only three points between the two parties. If somebody knows the rule in Manitoba, what happens if there's a tie? Please write it in the comments. Because I know it's different for every province. So mm -hmm. uh, I, th I think it, the, the corn flip for me just blows my mind that it's a, even a possibility, right? But yeah. Uh, yeah, three vote, three point lead, uh, gap between um, the NDP and the PCs. That is pretty close. That forum poll is looking pretty good. Um, uh, so, you know, I guess when you, you know, you last is best, that's what happens. Uh, the Northern community is the one that we know they're going to be NDP. Yeah. The PAS, Kamisak. The PA, and, yeah, Kamisak. Oh, you don't pronounce the S? No, there, it, there it is more French. Le PA, Kamisak, yeah. and Kwanitinuk. Yeah, Kiwa. Those yeah. should be NDP, but I, I, there are not many voters in those right. No. They're smaller, right? Yeah, so, so it's not going to boost the uh, NDP popular vote by a huge amount. Uh, but then we still don't have many results. We don't have any results from uh, Leslie Modier, as it was, I think it was, Concordia, Cinnaboya. Those yeah. are ones where the, we think the NDP is going to do pretty well. What are they doing? And what are they doing? And then, you know, uh, one like Union Station, only two polls reporting, and that's a place where they're going to get 60%, 70% of the vote. Um, whereas some of these, let's see, the rural writings. Dawson Trail was one we were kind of looking at as a potential pickup for the NDP, uh, but they're only they're behind by two hundred uh, some votes. Um, and what was the other one? Interlake Gimli. Dauphin is the one that I really thought that the NDP had a good shot of winning. And hey, the gap's only thirty nine votes. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that is a one that is that looks like coin toss. We have some very good uh, suggestions for a tie in Manitoba. So. Overtime rules, shootout, tiebreak. I don't know. Screw the shootout. I don't like the shootout. No, no, no. I'm done with the shootout. Three on three. Three on three. Your best and candidates. You, and you play until somebody <laughs> scores. There's no excuse. No five minutes. Just Do you like the three on three? I'm kind of getting tired I, of three on I, three. I know. I love the three on three. I, I like it too, but it's I they, love that it's, it's too strategic now. Like Sometimes they hold they just, the puck and yeah, they go back into go their out. zone. I think they should just go to no shootout. And a ten-minute three-on-three overtime, and if there's no goal after that three-minute over that ten-minute overtime, it's a tie. But they'll never do it because they, the Americans don't like ties. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. When we grew up, there used to be ties. Thing is, there would be children. very few. There would be very few ties with a ten minutes of three-on-three, three, right? Yeah. And yeah, we switched true. to hockey again. Hey, by the way, the, are the uh, are the Jets any good this year? I don't know. People. Uh, the Jets are always Jets okay. Fans. They're always okay. They're but never good but enough. They, 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 they get to the semifinals a few years ago. Yeah. They were my second favorite team uh, when they came back. I, I love that uh, I love that crowd. But, uh, uh, but anyway. we, What was the other one? Trial by combat? <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, but I know it's violence. But It's okay. probably violence, yeah. <laughs> but maybe it could be like sumo or like padded ones with, oh. with sticks. You do something fun. Paintball. Trial by paintball. I, I, I would pick... I would pick Mr. Canoe here. Uh, Canoe. Yes, I think. Yeah, Canoe. yeah, I think he he yeah. does look like he can. Uh, he is in good shape. Um, it, speaking about the leader, I see Miss, Miss Stevenson has taken a, a lead. I yeah, she was only up by four votes but... before. Now it's forty votes ish. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, she's probably fine. Uh, but that would only make two leaders, right? Because Dugald Lamont is still behind. Yeah. By four hundred votes, and what riding is Canoe in? I can't recall. Uh, uh, he's in Fort, Fort Rouge. Fort Rouge. Fort Rouge. Oh, yeah. And how's he doing? He should be fine, right? 74%. He's fine. 
<laughs> really? Yeah. Where is Ford? Who I am scanning? It's on. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's oh, he's, he's one elected. of the electeds. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we're still waiting Concordia, Lajimodier, and Cinnaboya, as well as Midland, and the two northern ridings still. The or two of the northern ridings. Thompson and and uh, the other one reported okay. Are we making a call, man? Uh, my friend, are we making a call? Uh, it's tempting, isn't it? I mean, those two northern ones will be NDP. Yeah, it's, they will be. It, it's it's. And so will Concordia, and so that puts them at thirty-one. And then they would need to lose at least two of these. Would have to flip. Ah, uh, three sixty-nine out of fourteen hundred. It's too low. I don't know. Yeah. They got like thirty votes in Kildonan River East. Yeah, it's too low. Not yet. Park, Let's Riel, wait. We're leaning. Wait. We're leaning. I'm not even. I'm not even trying to beat the the the, uh, the, 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 the networks. Channel. The networks, because who cares about them? Let me go. Those who are watching us right now, those are the real election nerds. In Don't Canada. tell them that everybody, anybody else is covering this. We'll lose the audience. No, no, but they're Do not, not they're, go anywhere else, anybody. They show reruns of, uh, of uh, the, the... Seinfeld and Friends, yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Uh, the Pot and, Dof- and Dauphin flipped. Heart, Heartland. Where's Dauphin? Dauphin goes, went orange? I no, don't blue. think so. Oh, it's oh it must be flipping close. back and forth. We, we are a little bit... We're not always... Uh, because uh, I'm on the CBC one that's going to refresh in nine seconds. So wait, let's see if... I'm also on the CBC one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Asiniboya. 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 Um, Dauphin's not flipping. Anyway. Anyway, that is close. And the paw... Did the paw finally light up? No, it's not lighting up here. You, If you're watching this on, on um, something else... Uh, you might have different numbers than us because we're watching the CBC website. I haven't looked at the Manitoba elections one. I don't know if it's any if it's any good or not. Well, thing is, some I of the elections the bodies website. have nice websites. Most of them yeah. have awful, awful websites. I went on the website uh, just before going on the air, and I could not see a link for the results. No way. I'm sure it's there, but it was not obvious. I mean, guess what you do? It's the election day. Election Manitoba just have a big target. Say results here. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah. 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 Yeah, someone says, yeah, do, like this. I don't know what it happens when you like it, but like this live stream and uh, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. But we also put the episodes of the numbers on every two weeks so you can watch both of us and uh, we'll split the proceeds. Don't worry about it. It's not just for me. Um, <laughs> we'll be very happy to get the three or four dollars that we get from YouTube. Um, th- we're, we're working for less than minimum wage here, people. Give us a break. Uh, we're doing this. We're doing this for the love of the love of the fans. Oh, well, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I do other things for money, but not this. <laughs> this is for the fun. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I I had to dress up, put do my hair, and put a tie on last night to go on TV at uh, mm. ten uh, thirty p.m. That's for money. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. That's not for fun. You have to pants and tie. That's money. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, we did get no, uh, the paw camisac has gotten the result, and uh, the PCs the are paw. ahead. Le paw camisac. Yeah. I that's really kind of think honest. that this is going to be uh, one one town that is reporting. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, what was the result in in that writing last time? It was not close. Hang on, I got, I'm going to pull it up. Oh, Paul Dauphin is, is now flipped over to orange. So uh, last time, uh, Park Amisak was 58 NDP, 24 PC, yeah. 14 green. But uh, I don't think do they have a green. No, they don't have. That a would green be deal. tough. If you, yeah. Excuse me, I'm just. Gonna... Oh, so I'm going to have to talk because he's blowing his nose. So, But he still can listen to me, so I can't say anything. Oh, Thank you for you narrating or for calling my, my nose uh, blowing. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so the paw camisac right now is blue, but I don't think it's going to stay blue. That would be a, a hell of a swing. Um, something, yeah, something that... I'm sure it's just like what was happening in Swan River, exactly. where it was one community that, that voted PC and the rest, when they report, they'll go to the NDP. And Dauphin I'm, flipping over is interesting, but I'm doing it is tight. a I'm doing a liberal check. Uh, River Heights, uh, eight of seventeen reporting, a three hundred vote uh, lead for the NDP, and Saint Boniface. Uh, ooh, Saint Boniface uh, de Galtlemon is trading by almost four hundred votes with eight of twenty eight reporting. So I think Look at those tuxedo. are going to be. Those are going to be two pickups for um, for uh, for the NDP against the Liberals. What about Tuxedo? Look at it. It's orange. What the yeah. hell? Wow. It was interesting. The probe research polls, oh, they do that. breakdowns of Winnipeg by 
kind of quadrant. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I the numbers always seemed a bit strange to me because the NDP was always doing really well in the southwest. And that's like the strongest area for the PCs. But if you yeah. took their numbers and applied the swing there, Tuxedo would be one of those seats that could flip. So it's not impossible. Uh, but that would be that would be quite it would be shocking if if Heather Stevenson lost and the PCs still ended up with 42 percent of the vote, which is where they are right now. <laughs> that's right. Uh, Look at the liberal vote, though. I know it's again, it's four of 26 reporting, but 27 uh, percent of the liberals in the Tuxedo. So maybe there are some disappointed PCs hmm. that were more progressive. Oh, than yeah, you're right. That's a big liberal number. That uh, they would go to uh, what you said earlier about uh, Heather Stephenson being a, a PC and not just a C, uh, perhaps yeah. boosting the liberal vote. We'll see how it ends up tonight. I heard from from one person um, who watches Manitoba politics pretty closely that there were a few ridings where the liberals had pretty decent candidates and the PCs were hoping that would siphon off enough of the NDP vote. But maybe it's siphoning off some of the PC vote, people who don't want to vote NDP, but they don't want to vote PC. Um, I mean, that could be something that we'll have to follow. Uh, Fort White, now well, it's getting to a point where I think that Obi Khan is probably going to be fine. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if Heather Stevenson loses, one presumes that she will resign as, as leader, uh, what direction the party's going to take. Do we have a, are we making a draft of potential PC leaders? <laughs> or we'll do that at some point. Yeah. Uh, they're now up to 30 seats. So it, we're still waiting, though, on four to report, eh? Uh, f uh, what are we at? No, five to report. So we're still got yeah, Jimaudier not reporting, Concordia, yeah, Sinoboya, Midland, and Kiwatanuke. I'm getting comfortable calling it. You're gonna, you want to call it? The thing is, it's the popular vote is is surprising. It's yeah. close. I mean, it's within range of what the poll said. Yeah, but remember uh, what I said before in 2011, the gap was only two and a half points, yeah, and they won yeah. 37 seats. The NDP. So. Yeah. If the same thing is happening this time, but uh, yeah, could yeah. let's just let, let we're in fantasy land, but let's say that the NDP ends up holding at 30 seats, but loses the popular vote. Wow. Would the NDP suddenly become converts to first past the post? So I, I assume they must already be because I don't think I've heard that the Wild Canoe is going to change the system to uh, uh, proportional representation. Oh. Provincial and New Democrats tend not to want to change the system. No, because uh, they've been in power. That's why. No, oh, don't be cynical. That's no. Uh, what? I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm wrong about this. No, everybody, of course, of course everybody's, know. everybody's political leanings are pure as the decisions. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> proportional representation is the fun game. Hmm. It doesn't work in the real world. It I, works I in a lot of countries. <laughs> no, 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 no. It doesn't work. Here. It doesn't work here. Right. I'm not against it. I'm not against it, by the way. So I know people are going to be mad about me. I'm not against proportional representation. I'm just not for it. I don't think we have he ain't much for it. He ain't against it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, the baden württemberg system, which they've now abandoned, that's the. I know. I system. saw. I uh, saw. I that's so sad. The the best runner up, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got a question here about uh, we talked about it at the beginning, but that it's only you in the ballot box ad uh, at this point. It's, it's, I mean, to me, it's, it looked more like a desperate play, but if the PCs are at 42%, they might not have been that desperate. They might've felt that there was a few voters that were feeling like pressure to vote NDP. I'm not, I don't understand who these voters could be. It's hard to imagine a voter who think, who is feeling societal pressure to vote for a party, but because of, they see this ad, they're not going to. It's strange. My view is that more people would see this ad. More people don't follow politics as much as all of us do. And they would see this ad and be like, what? What? Why would I be ashamed of voting for this party? Why? It would make me wonder what's wrong with the PCs, well, that the I should is, feel bad about voting for them. And I don't know why you would want to put that idea in anybody's head. This is culture war, my friend. It's mm. basically we want to have a contrary opinion to whatever it is. Vaccines. Uh, what, whatever, Taylor Swift, whatever it is. <laughs> so basically they're saying, see how uncool it is to vote PC. Vote for us because we, <laughs> oh, we yeah. know that <laughs> Reverse deep down, psychology or yeah. Reverse psychology. That's what yeah, yeah. Is. I don't know. It's It was just a bizarre. And also who, who doesn't know that no one sees who you're voting for? 
uh, I, it was just a bizarre ad to me. I don't understand what the thinking was behind it. I understand the thinking, but like I understand why the some people within the party might have felt that this is what people were thinking. But again, who are these voters who are going to think this and be swayed by that kind of ad? That's the what I don't understand. Because if you already feel this way, that you're gonna you you shouldn't feel ashamed of who you're gonna vote for and all this kind of stuff. And even if I disagree with people, I don't want to get. You probably are voting the way you want to anyway. Like I just don't understand who these, who the, who this ad was targeted to. And Here's it, that's the, what I don't understand. Again, you don't understand because you're thinking rationally. Oh. The culture wars don't work this way. It, they, they I think those people who put who come up with these things, in the culture wars. They want to be outrageous so that the media and people like us will talk about this. And yeah, it did get a lot of play. Denounce it. Yeah, it gets tons yeah. of play. That's on, and against ton, not only tons of play and eyeballs, but it would say, look, you see these people, they're against us. That's how yeah. culture wars work. That's the brain rotting that, the, that they have. But I, I understand that. What I don't understand is who they thought would be swayed by that. That's what I mean. I feel like the people who... Anyway, I still feel that it was... Yeah. It was appealing to people who were already on their side. So I didn't quite understand the ad. I've never that, seen anything like it before. That 1% of Keystone party. I'm looking yeah. at the total result here. Oh, I see there's 128 communists so far in Manitoba. Oh. Pretty good, 0.1%. They always run, so they ran enough candidates to maintain party status. You had to run five candidates. Okay. And both the Keystone and the communists managed to run five apiece. And that means they get to continue to being a party. If you don't run five... You don't get to be a party anymore, which I think is not a bad. We have a lot of parties that are just you run one candidate and that's enough at the national level, federally. Yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, you should have to do a bit more than that. Do you know what the threshold is to be a, an official party at the legislature? I believe it's four. Four. OK, that's reasonable. OK. I think it should be two. But uh, yeah. anyway, we've had this discussion before. It's, it's a good discussion. I, I don't disagree with you. I think two is enough. Yeah. So the polls have now been closed for an hour and 20 minutes. It's longer than I thought. I we were to told this was electric. We complain every time, but we, uh, like this was electronic votes. Like in Ontario, bang, 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 very quick. It was like over in like half an hour. We only got thirty-two percent of the polls reporting. Didn't they say that there were two hundred thousand Manitobans that voted in advance? Yeah, but so apparently they didn't want to count those yet. But we don't even have two hundred thousand votes yet. So no, they weren't that's... willing to put those in the system. This is before. this is that this I, is, I don't get. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I can't like lock your people, close the door, turn the key, start counting the votes. Nothing's going to happen. Look, but what's interesting now, the popular vote is starting to widen again. Now it's 3.2 points. Uh, so, and we're getting to the point where nearly all the, we're at 53. So we still got four left to report. And see, now now we're starting to get the ones Concordia is now reporting. So that's an NDP seat. The Pasca is is orange again. Is orange again. We're still waiting for Kuat Nuke. Um, I oh, I want to call it. I want to call it. Well, now that the popular yeah. vote gap is 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 yeah. growing again, let's call it NDP uh, government. How you feel about that? Majority, majority government, huh? Majority. We're only at thirty-two seats. Thirty-three now. I see. On the Vince wins the most seats in Manitoba. <laughs> We'll see if I'm tweeting this right now. Live tweeting, my friend. Oh, this is why you're. This is why you're. You're. Uh, you're watching this. Yeah, but yeah. But see, like I've got like browsers. Like I'm. I'm. Yeah. I'm taking care of the streaming. I'm scared to click on anything. We, there's only two ridings with the gap is under 100 votes. So I'm. I'm okay counting it. Calling it. Let's Johnny call it. USC NDP wins Manitoba election and hashtag MB Poly and I'm calling it. What time is it? 10:33. So it's 11. Uh, no, it's 9:30. 9.30 to 23, uh, uh, not Mountain, uh, Central Time. Central Time. There you go. There you go. All right. 2.6 points. Congratulations. Web Canoe becomes a premier, first First Nation premier. It, he's elected, or was there a, a First Nation premier before and he was not elected? I, I forget about it. I was told there was somebody uh, like a long time ago in Manitoba. But well, if there you has don't been, know... There, there has been past Métis... Because uh, I think, uh, what was his name? Um, oh, I can't remember his name. He was like in the 1880s, 1890s. Uh, anyway. Me too, yeah. Um, 
there was a, a, a Métis premier. It was a, Louis Riel was obviously, but he wasn't a premier that we've seen as the father of the province. But uh, there has been Métis, but there hasn't been a First Nations premier of a province, uh, as, as to my knowledge. So that is a first for sure. Um, John Norquay, that's it. John Norquay. Oh, I remember that name. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so yes, this would be the first First Nations uh, elected uh, premier in in the country, um, in the province. I'm not sure about the territories. I don't think in in Yukon there has been, but potentially Northwest Territories. Obviously, Nunavut has had um, yeah. has had Inuit uh, premiers, but uh, first Indigenous provincial premier. Well, no, yeah, first First Nations. Provincial premier. And now, of course, look for the PC surge to yeah. just completely screw with my numbers. But uh, well, yeah. now they're at thirty-three to twenty-two. How many seats like that? Uh, you, how many seats now would have to flip? There's eleven seats between them, so you need six seats six. to flip. And I don't think there's enough seats that are close enough for six seats to flip. Uh, hang on, are there any sure PC seats that haven't reported Noah? No. Cool. Kiwet Sinuk will be NDP. Yeah. Dauphin has flipped again. Yeah. Oh, it's very close, though. We don't know. Uh, and again, in Winnipeg, uh, Assiniboia is light blue, but it's... Uh, yeah. Oh, look at that. There's six votes counted. Three to two to one in Assiniboia. Oh, okay. I've only got two. I've only got one, one vote apiece. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so... Um, but you look it's, at you look it's at the a slaughter in Winnipeg. It's yeah, a slaughter you look at that map. Yeah. It's yeah. this is the map that the NDP wanted to win, where the PCs are pushed just to the western suburbs. Because uh, look, they lost Seine River, they lost Waverly, Assiniboia. There just flipped over again. But as you said, six to four for wow. Nellie Kennedy. Seine River, I had it as light blue, and I see it's most likely going to be. Uh, so, Minister of Mental Health and Community Wellness, Janice Mortley Lacombe, uh, Lacombe, sorry is uh, heading to a defeat, it looks like. Uh, Kyle is taking credit for the failure of the Greens because he was not involved. He's taking uh, credit? Oh. <laughs> well, Kyle, you have three elections next year. Uh, my, uh, and two of them are pretty good. Yeah. No, for the New Greens. New Brunswick, BC, what's the other one? Saskatchewan. 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 Yeah, well, no. New Brunswick Saskatchewan. might be this year, but we'll see. Uh, what about our game? So I chose Seine River and... Oh, that's too early to play, right? Oh, wait, it's nine points. And what else did I choose? Riel? I chose Riel. That was uh, you oh, hedging, right? Yeah, let's see. What's that was Riel? a bad choice. What's... That's 16, 17 points. That's no good. Uh, what else did I choose? I chose Waverly. Which Waverly is, was close, That's right? good. That's only three or four points. And then the other one I chose was Selkirk. Is it Selkirk? Yeah, Selkirk. Yeah. yeah. 15 points. Oof, this is going to be bad. You chose Tim- Tyndall Park. Dindle Park. Uh, that's that was a bad choice. That's thirty points. What? Uh, yep. Um, Saint Boniface. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 the Tyndall Park. No, no. I chose. Did I choose Tyndall Park? Yeah, you did. Uh, Fourteen I points. I meant the in other Boniface. liberal seat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I chose uh, uh, Kirkfield Park. Yeah, Kirkfield Park is looking. Uh, close, right? That's pretty close. And then the Interlake Gimli. Uh, not that close. We didn't do that well. But we'll see if we'll see which ones ended up being. <laughs> so we chose eight. We'll see if any of them end up being the yeah. top eight. Um, yeah. I, I, I think I meant to take River Heights. Hmm. I remember saying I, I want two liberal seats. But if I took uh, Tyndall Park. Oh, well, it's okay. Madame Lamoureux. Next liberal leader? Yeah, I think so. Because if we're looking at the so River Heights, John Gerard, we got 11 of 17 polls reporting. Well, he's only behind by 140 votes or so. So that's not too bad. We'll see. Because that's a bit closer, I think, than it was earlier. But in St. Boniface, uh, Dougal Lamont, still behind by 400 votes. Still only 10 of 28 polls reporting. So <laughs> we'll see what happens there. And of course, once I did the call, I see that the PCs are at 26 now. What the hell happened? <laughs> that happened. What's, what flipped? Kiwat Nuke went to them. That's not going to stay. Yeah, that's not going to stay. Okay. Uh, oh, it's three votes in Kiwat yeah. Nuke. Two to votes for. They're the already back down to twenty-five. There you go. No, now they're at twenty-six. So Kiwat Nuke is is not going to stay. Um, oh, la Jimodier. Oh, la Jimodier. La Jimodier. And Dauphin, Dauphin is still by seventy votes. Oh, 
that's three. So that's going back and forth. Uh, but the thing is, the ones that are f like the next ones that need to flip. So there's Kildonan River East that is 64 votes. And then after that, Waverly is 142. Uh, so they got to flip those two seats to get to 28. Uh, but then if they lose Kiwatnuk, then they need to find another one. They're only ahead by seven votes in the in Assiniboia and 75 in Dauphin. Uh, so I, this could end up being pretty close. Um, but yeah, I still feel, I still feel okay. I feel pretty good about my 31 NDP seats. 31, yeah. I had 31, 24, 2. It's I, not going to be two for the Liberals. It looks like they no, only have one. So it'll probably end up being 31, 25, 1. Yeah, that's close uh, enough. Yeah, that's good enough. We'll give that to you. That's okay. Unless, well, again, again, I'm going to go to bed. I can't go to bed now. You know what's going to happen. I'm going to go to bed and the PCs are going to get to, to 28. And I'll wake you up. I'm going to have to come back. <laughs> Put your phone next to you. Honey, I'm sorry. I can't. It's, it, it, <laughs> what's going on? Like, the, the yeah. popular vote gap is now back up to about four points. So it's interesting that usually the trends don't go back and forth, right? They usually keep going in the same direction as more votes are counted. So that's an interesting it's an interesting thing that the gap is now uh, 3.5 points. But So we're getting close. I count the total votes getting close to 200,000. So Yeah. And what's that's... the poll reporting? We're at 41%. Did anybody call it? Does anybody know? Have anybody else called it? Were we too confident? It's just I I, I, I have trouble seeing the path because, as I said, Kowatnuk is going to go back over. Uh, okay, let, well, let's look at the path. So look at the orange, the pale orange seats right now on the map and tell me which one would flip. Um, Kirkfield Park, there's 300 votes. It's possible, although it's 22 of 27. It's almost yeah. over. So there's Kildonan River East. There's 64 votes there. And Waverly, there's 142. So that would put them up to 27, assuming Kawatnu goes NDP. And then what would that be after that? Not Seine River. I would get Seine River wrong. Um, this Fort Richmond looks tough. How, you know what? Southdale. I'm going to get Southdale wrong. Hang yeah, on. that's going to be the one that ends up bucking the trend, isn't it? No, it's now NDP again. That was one of the ones oh, we yeah, thought right, would be in. Right, 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 right. Yeah, 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 you're right. Okay, I got, I got this. Uh, Le Gimaudier, that's actually one that's... I mean, I, the PCs have to hold these seats, right? That they're... Yep. Because they're up in narrow seats a bit more than the NDP seems to be. I mean, if it's if it ends up... Again, you said the Kowatsinuk. Oh, that's not Kowatsinuk. Sorry, I'm, I messed that up. What is it? Uh, Ko I need to read it. Kowatsinuk. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Apologies to... Uh, Kiwatsinuk. Um, so that's 31 25 1. That's still a very tight legislature. Yeah. That's, so it's, it's um, again, it's, the, the whipping, the whip will have some whipping to do for sure. Yeah, a little so. bit. Yeah, just to make sure that they can keep things. But, you know, when you lose an election, do you really want to force the defeat the government because someone no. had a cold? You want to rebuild. You want to rebuild. But, yeah. Uh, it's a strong opposition, which I think for democracy is good. Um, it's interesting I mean, just to see how little the PC vote has changed. So let's say they end up at 42%. So it'd be 42% in this one. Previous election would be 47. 2016 was the standout. They had 53. In 2011, they had 44. 2007, they had 38. So like the PCs have this. It's really interesting how there's like more or less 40% of the vote that you can kind of assume is going to go to the PCs. And at least 35 that goes to the NDP, and then it depends on whether the Liberals do well or not. And that kind of decides how the election is. One of the other things I heard in the podcast was that Gary Dewar would say that he didn't really care who the PC leader was. He cared who the Liberal leader was, uh, which is interesting. <laughs> because that PC vote does seem to be pretty solid. So. Yep. Yep. Uh, all right. As it is in many provinces. Wow. Kind of just want Kiwatnuk to change. Oh, there it goes. It changed over. Okay. That makes me feel better. Is it orange? Yeah. So now it's 32-24. At this point now, we're just really hoping that our call doesn't end up being wrong. <laughs> this is the thing that we care most about at this stage. They have elected Tin, uh, Cindy Lamaru and Tyndall Park, so she is going to go back and maybe be a caucus of one. Sounds dull. 
Does she speak French? I believe a little bit, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. with a name like that, you would expect, and, and in Manitoba, I mean, there's, how, I think it's, uh, what, the 80,000 Franco-Manitobans? There's, yeah, there's a decent je population. Vous salue, je vous salue les Franco-Manitobans si vous regardez. Bon. Yeah, because uh, Kevin Lamoureux, I think, speaks a little bit of French. I've seen him speak in the house, but uh, I, I don't think it's, it's not, um, it's not uh, super comfortable as far as I can remember, but, but yeah. <sighs> and he also represents that kind of area. He represents Winnipeg North, so that's up there. All right, so this is like, it's, it's really kind of interesting because it's like a two-point gap. It's only eight seats. So, it's like, when yeah. two seats flip, it suddenly gets much closer again. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to be okay with our call. When do we get to half of the... <laughs> I mean, why do we do this to ourselves? We don't have to, we don't have to make a call, right? I mean, and for those true. thing is, for those who are on Twitter that just saw my tweets, like, oh, this is all serious. No, no, we're just, we're having a drink, eating yeah. candy, and having fun with our listeners. Uh, it's, I mean... I, I don't fool around with this, but we're no, having no. fun here. I mean, so, yes, we yeah. don't want to look stupid. Uh, no, that would, that would be. Yeah. But, you know, you look at some of the, so the CBC has this nice thing with the close races. So these are all the margins that are at least four points. So I got 77 votes, the NEP leads in Waverly, 81 in Kildona East, Kildona River East, and just seven in Assiniboia. But the PCs are only up by 73 in Dauphin. They're only up by 97 in Brandon West. Uh, Sevenson's only head by 136 in Tuxedo, and, and the PCs are only head by 92 votes in Leji Uh I wanted to look at Brandon. I hadn't looked at Brandon. So Brandon East, they haven't called it yet. Uh, Glenn Samard looks pretty close at 55% of the vote. He's got a lead of about wow. 230 votes. But Brandon West, which no one really had on the radar, oh, is even closer. Oh, close. it's close. 97 I had votes. The, I had the PCs winning. Uh, I think they had a strong uh, lead uh, in the... Let me check. Uh, let me pull that up because I had I had Brandon West. I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be. Well, where were the margins last time in Brandon East was, and Brandon was, West? East, it was close. Bre West, yeah. it wasn't. Hang on. Uh, so I have it here. So Brandon West was 58 PC, 24 NDP. Yeah, what's happening there? That's a, so that's a, I mean, it's of course it's not over, right? But still, it's really close. Uh, and Brandon East was closer. I have it right here. Uh, it was uh, 51 to 36. But even that, that's a 15 point gap. Yeah. So it that means that Brandon East would have followed uh, more than the, the, the provincial swing. Uh, wow, okay. The comment by Seabass just made me laugh. Uh, Let's go, Brandon. Oh, <laughs> you're not yeah, supposed to why, read it. <laughs> why not? Uh, yeah, well, you know, I just. Uh, but anyway, we're we're getting reports from our commenters who might be always messing with us, which happened no, once. No, 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 no. That Dugald Lamont has resigned. Well, or seems like Lamont is resigning. Okay, we're not going to go report. Well, we're not going well, to run to the press. He's going to lose. But... Did they call it yet? What's the uh, margin in Saint Boniface? Still only 11 of 28, and he's, he's, but he's still behind by nearly 600 votes, so I don't think he's coming back. That's unfortunate for him. It's a, it's a tough spot to be in. Hey, being the leader of a small party is not a lot of, not a lot of benefits, not a lot of uh, accolades you get for sticking around and, and leading a party that is probably broke and doesn't have a lot of volunteers and... You know what? Those small parties also tend to have so much drama. Uh, it's like the the less, the, the smaller the stakes, the higher the drama. It just seems sometimes. Uh, so yeah. So. We'll Speaking see. of drama, let's take a second here, just a little break here, talk about what uh, last night in Jean Talon. Now, we won't go over the whole <laughs> thing because we're going to do a podcast on this. But one of the things interesting in Jean Talon last night was how, what happened to Quebec Solidaire. Only 18% of the vote. And it just turns out that I'm going to go to the convention of Quebec Solidaire and going to be on the field. And that convention may not be as happy as it mm. used to be. Right? It's going to be in Gatineau. I was thinking maybe I'd go too. Well, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have not? a real drink together. Yeah, Why it's not? Gatineau. So a short drive. Uh, le, le Centre des Congrès de Gatineau. Uh, I'll, I'll, so I'll be there. So uh, I'll, I'll probably... Uh, go over the river in Ottawa as well so mm. we'll see 
But let's go back to uh, let's go back to uh, to, to how's going on? 32-24-1. Yeah, I'd be really happy if it stops at this. Stop the count. And look at that popular vote, man. Forty-four to forty-two point five. Wow. Yeah, you know what? Forum's going to end up being really close. Got to say, forty. They had forty-five, forty-one, twelve. So way off on the seat count, though. Yeah, but they're. Well, I don't know why Pulsar puts out seat counts. They, they should. That. They shouldn't. They should leave that. To it us. gives you the chance to be wrong. Twice. <laughs> Twice, or to make one mistake and and the actual job that you're supposed to do, kind of get wrong, right? So anyway, I don't. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we should do a live pod in from the from the uh, from the convention floor oh, in Quebec City. Oh, you know what? Do we have the gear to do that? We can. We could do that. I can manage right? that. Probably. You can manage that. Yeah, I, have, I can bring some gear. Will will pe will people listen to that if we do that? I don't know. So, live here you can. We'll, we'll set up a GoFund fund me. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Go to the numberspot.ca oh, yeah, right. or leschiffre.ca. We bought them uh, both. We're paying for them both. So. This is this is uh, Eric and I. Free. We're not uh, we're not uh, capitalist. This is just you know to get by. We need to have some little money from this time that mm -hmm. we're spending. But uh, please, please, please uh, register to that podcast. We have a lot of fun doing it, and we have a lot of fun commenting with our uh, our patrons on uh, on Patreon and on Discord. So and next week see. will be our first patrons only episode. So all right. So you don't want to miss that. No, you don't. Uh, we're gonna get. We're gonna. We're gonna swear a lot. It's gonna be just for. Oh, <laughs> just for adults. We haven't. <laughs> we no, we're not swearing, people. I don't think. No, but, we, no, but we, this is, is the second live stream we chat about what, about uh, about swearing. I, we should. Stop. I've sworn once on your stream. Yeah. You remember what it was? Yeah. Uh, no, I once. don't. Once. Yeah, no, you don't. I don't remember what it was about, though. It, it was late night, and uh -huh. we talked about Nazis, and oh. I said, "Well, <laughs> fuck Nazis." Right. And it's like, "Oh, sorry, I swore on your pot and your uh, live stream." He's like, "Oh, yes, yeah, it's it's not fuck Nazis. It's a, it's a lot." Yeah, that's okay. You can do that. Yeah. Okay. You can invite them to the house people. too, but uh... <laughs> they didn't know. They didn't know. <laughs> Although, fuck the Soviets. Mm, okay. You can say that no. too. Why not? Um, uh, let's uh, let's keep it clean. Um, <laughs> All right, so <laughs> tuxedo. So it looks like uh, Stephenson is back on top. She's back I on top. See. Although I, I mean, those Winnipeg seats. The yeah. So hang on. La Gimaudière is still close. So the PCs are still leading in only one, two, three, four Winnipeg seats. So four of thirty-two. Although 32. Red River. Red River North, does that count? Is it no. Close enough? No, it doesn't, huh? Okay. No, because yeah. it's those 32 are the ones that are within the Winnipeg City boundaries, yeah. right? Um, you can't, yeah. Even though if you do well in southern Win uh, Manitoba, as it looks like the BC is doing, you can't you lose, you know, almost the entire capital region. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, that's the thing, right? In, in, in Manitoba, most of the seats are in Winnipeg, right? So if you can't be competitive or at least be competitive enough to win at least half the seats in Winnipeg, you're, you're going to be in trouble because uh, PCs can't win the North. They don't win the North. They haven't. It's just that's not what happens. And the NDP can't win the rural South. And they're really not doing it this time. So we were thinking they might be able to flip Dauphin. Um, they're only behind by 140 votes, so that's not out of possibility. I really thought Selkirk was one that was going to flip, but doesn't look like it. It's about a 500 vote lead for the PCs. And Interlake Gimli is another one that... Going to be uh, wrong in Selkirk. Yeah. That's about 700 votes for the PCs. So the polls did suggest there was a big swing in the rural areas, but it doesn't look like that's happening as much, right? Because the polls suggested that the NDP had something around 40% outside of Winnipeg, um, uh, which would match what they got in like 2011, the last time they formed a government. But it doesn't look like they might be... Um, uh, getting it. Thank you to Michael Sullivan. He's pitching in. That's uh, very nice. We appreciate it. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Very much appreciate that. Dollar fifty each makes our night. I I'm not knocking anything. Oh, by the way, there was a comment by Seabass. Hang on, Fournier is not a capitalist <laughs> and going to the QS convention. I said we're not capitalists by doing this. this oh is right, not, right. This is what I meant. We're not. We're doing a podcast and live stream, but we can't live off that because we don't make enough money. So that we, the, the goal is just to, you know, 
have a little conversation for our time. And going to the QS convention, I'm not. I'm going as a journalist. I'm not going as as a member. So I'll have a media <laughs> pass. By the way, maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, go, I'm going as media. So I yeah. was. I was at the CPC convention in Quebec City. By the way, that was fun. Mm-hmm. That was that was fun. They um, many of them drink a lot. Uh, More than you I. should. You should do a cultural comparison between. Uh, federal conservatives and Quebec City there, what what they do in their off time. But seriously, I'm going from the federal conservatives to Quebec City there. Is that the biggest gap in the country among real parties? <laughs> it has to be, It's right? pretty far, yeah. Is, that's there, pretty is far. there a party that is more to the left that no. has seats in Canada? No. Quebec City there so. is by far the most left-wing m- mainstream party in the country. I, I don't think there's any other party that comes pretty close. Um and then for the furthest right, well, it's not the furthest big right, party, but, it's a, but the big party, yeah. yeah, yeah, like the you know you could you could probably say that maybe the Saskatchewan party is more to the right, or uh, I don't know the BC Conservatives now who have seats or something like yeah. that. Sometimes UCP might be more to the right, but anyway, in terms of a, there's not a lot of overlap between Quebec Solidaire <laughs> and no. Pierre Poilievre voters, so I no. don't think they're, <clears throat> I don't think you'll recognize anybody that you saw in Quebec City. <laughs> This candy is for you, people. I'm I'm, I'm having a good good night, and thank you for being there. Is it, is it a? It's sour patch sour. Okay. You know that mm. it just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like oh. that. All right, so we got 33 seats for the NDP, 23 oh, for the PCs. Yeah, sorry, they're that's, screwing with you. That's, um, that's Dauphin, right? Dauphin has slipped. No, Dauphin has no wood. Which one? Which flip? one has slipped? A No, I think they had that yeah, before, didn't a, they? No, a Cinnaboya. Yeah, flip seven flip. votes. I don't understand how some of these. Like Assiniboia has like 170 votes counted. Yeah. And then you you have a riding like St. Boniface that has uh, like 5,000 votes or like, I don't know what's going on. And and they tell you the electronic voting is supposed to be a lot faster and all this. But uh, anyway. Well, maybe not. Yeah. Didn't didn't you say earlier tonight, sorry, I'm, I'm speaking with my mind full, that they could be done in 90 minutes because yes. they have they have failed. Yes, they said there would be everything would be done, and it's not. Oh, Brandon West, Brandon West is the one. They flipped that one. Really? Oh, <gasps> now wow. Michael is helping us to buy us to, to help you get candy. Merci. Oh wow, you guys are the best. That, that is, would be that would be a major fourteen. Flip. Yeah, that that would be an unexpected one, especially that wow. if. So it makes me wonder if the the rural po- polling was that the NDP was doing so well in Brandon. What, what did those 27 people in, in the forum <laughs> polls say? <laughs> say? So those who don't know, we discussed this off air just before going on. Was so it off forum, air? I think we did it on the air. Was it on the air? Yeah, maybe. So uh, the forum poll had a breakdown, regional breakdown. It had Winnipeg, Brandon, and the rest of Manitoba. The thing is, Brandon was 27 respondents with a margin of error of plus or minus 20%. And the, uh, it, was, it was NDP plus 14 I think, but 27 cases is nothing. But the most interesting part was that the Green Party was at 0.4% uh, with 27 cases. Do that math, have fun. So uh, yeah, again, strange things going on with Forum, but you know what, their final poll will be close, but yeah. it will be close, but their seat count, eh, I don't know, so we'll see. Yeah. Right, right now the NDP is at 51% in Brandon East, and they are at da, 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 da. Website's a bit clunky. Forty-eight for in Brandon West, so they're polling it around. They're getting around fifty percent of the vote in Brandon, which is pretty pretty impressive, because they usually don't, you know, to win Brandon West and to win Brandon West, but not be winning in early Gimli. That's surprising. Which uh, they're behind by seven hundred votes. They're still behind in Selkirk. Uh, Dawson Trail was another one that maybe the NDP might have had a shot in, but they're behind by six hundred votes. Uh, so so. The, uh, the Brandon West, the NDP lost Brandon West by 35 points wow. four years ago. So, uh, and I, I, I had it, of course, as going PC by, I think, a margin of nine points. But now it's tied. So, wow. Hmm. Yeah, I, uh, we, we made a good call. The, the, the NDP is winning this. Web Kennedy was going to be the premier. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, so... When uh, on one of, on my podcast, uh, Kelly Saunders, who uh, teaches at the Brandon University, she had mentioned that the healthcare issue, especially in, in um, 
uh, was was an issue in rural areas, right? Because if if it's harder to get to the if you if you have emergency rooms that close or, or this kind of thing, harder access to uh, to the hospital, then you know that can be a big issue. So maybe that's something that did it. But uh, yeah, for the NDP to win, uh, it's really interesting. If this ends up being the map, there's no gains in southern rural Manitoba. They win Brandon, and they win most of Winnipeg. Like this is this is a pretty urban rural split. Uh, that is like accentuating. It's even more than it was before, right? Because the NDP used to be able to win some seats in the in the south. Uh, so that's interesting. It, it's maybe that's why this vote is not as efficient as I guess it is pretty efficient. But yeah, it does look like the the Manitoba is getting more that urban rural split like we saw in in Calgary in Alberta. In Alberta. Yeah. yeah, and as we I see mean, in Saskatchewan and Colorado, and uh, this this is the bigger split. It's not the age split. It's not the gender split. It's the rural versus urban. So, yeah. Very, very interesting. Uh, what's going on in the... Uh, Sign, I'm going to be wrong in Sign River, huh? It's you you had that also. going? You had I, that going, I, PC? It was, it was a toss-up blue. Mm. Uh, it, was, it was a big swing in Sign River. Let me check Sign River. What was it again? It's really interesting. They are winning a seat like Sign River and Waverly. Like, these are suburb, suburb seats. Uh, when I looked at they the were Google, twenty points. Twenty yeah. points. When I looked so. at the Google Maps of them, they are like new builds, s- s- like so kind of suburban kind of ridings, right? The kind of thing yeah. where you would expect that the NDP would have a little bit trouble getting as big of a swing yeah. as. And so the fact that they're winning them is pretty impressive. There was the thought that uh, you know the parental rights issue about pronouns and this kind of thing. Um, that the PCs were hitting on was particularly aimed at you know newer Canadians um, who would have you know a little bit more social conservative views if, if uh, tend to be more religious that kind of thing, yep. and that would help them in seats like Waverly and Saint River, um, and and Louis Galindo is also a terrific person. This is great. We're doing so well tonight. Um, so anyway, it, it's interesting that it doesn't seem like that is working. Right. That was that was one of the worries I had about calling an NDP government like today when I wrote wrote what I thought was going to happen was yeah. that some of these policies that the PCs were hitting on were things that in the media's mind in sort of the discourse were going to be uh, seen as desperate and negative and problematic that it would appeal to people who um, might not be showing up in polls that you know that kind of thing, and, but it doesn't seem like it's happening because Waverly is like one of the more diverse ridings in in the city, and it is it's close, uh, but the NDP is winning it right now. Uh, Saint River wow. would be another one like that. So it is interesting to see how 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 this and is w- working. And Waverly Waverly was the minister of labor and immigration, John yeah. Reyes. Um, yeah. So. There are some and if I remember correctly, about 40 or 45 percent of the population are immigrants in that riding. Some uh, some significant cabinet ministers are mm. losing tonight. Uh, yeah, we should have a list of cabinet ministers. Uh, I, I do not, unfortunately. Yeah, but, uh, there's I know there's some of them, including in there. Oh, they have them in the CBC page. So the only ones they have. So they have. Uh, we should really fund the CBC, don't we? Yeah. Oh, well, we do <laughs> with, their, with our tax dollars. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, so the, the, we have reelected, we have Kelvin Gertson in Steinbeck, Wayne Owasco in Lac de Bonnet, uh, Greg Nesbitt, Riding Mountain, Turtle Mountain, Doyle Pignac, Ro- Ro- Rochelle Squires is defeated. She was the minister of families. She's defeated in Riel. Uh, John Reyes, as you mentioned, is, is trailing. James Tietzma trailing. Uh, Jeff Wharton looks like he'll probably be reelected. Janice Morley Lecomte, who is the health minister, or mental health, sorry, uh, she is is trailing. Kirkville Park, Kevin Klein, environment. Uh, what else we got? Sinaboya, he's going to be fighting. Scott Johnston. Uh, where is the health minister? Audrey Gordon in Southdale, and that one is uh, that one's going NDP, isn't it? <clears throat> so, yeah, not a lot of cabinet ministers are surviving, and. So if we hit a pause right now and say that this is the result, um, 33 seats for the NDP is not as good as their last couple elections under Selinger and Dewar when they got 36, 37. But it is still a pretty good victory. Yeah. Not as big as even as the PCs, uh, who got 36 seats in 2019, 40 seats in, in, in uh, 2016. 
But yeah, support PCs from someone have, else, just, it's great. I'm just trying to say, be very uh, equal the, to everybody. Thank the, you. The, 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 the PCs have a higher ceiling just in general, right? Yeah. I mean, in this, in this day and age. Yeah, because uh, they, they have the bigger base in in yeah uh because yeah the the floor for the pcs like they i wrote it down somewhere where is it uh well they've those... never won fewer than 19 seats since 1958 wow. so you That's got a okay. base of 19 seats and the ndp only won 14 in 2016 18 in 2019 yeah. um so yeah that the pcs start from it start at 19 yeah. so they, they have to find 10 seats and they win so yeah. so i'm looking at brandon west right now six votes uh, it's 2,175 to 2,169. Very, wow. very close. This could still flip. We, one of us should have picked it. We should have. Huh? Well, it, it finished by 35 points last time around. It, was, yeah. it would have been a weird call, but, you know. Oh, and, and Draco, thank you very much. Might be a longer <laughs> name. It's cut off. See, if we mention it, people, this is great. You guys are terrific. Thank you so much. We might actually hit minimum wage today. It's oh. terrific. Um <laughs> Dauphin was another one we should have picked because this is a very close riding. Uh, we didn't pick good ridings. <laughs> well, the thing is... Uh, we, the, should, we should look to see to, what the ideal choice would have been, what yeah, our smallest and, margin could have been, and we're going to end up being them. like many yeah. times bigger than that. To, to, our, to our defense, though, uh, Manitoba is not a big province. There were few polls. There yeah. were zero local polls, as whereas... Quebec, Ontario, BC, Alberta, Federal, we all seen uh, local polls that would have helped with our analysis. We had very few polls to work with. And yet, I think we have a pretty decent result. Yeah. Uh, you know, my, my magic number in my head, I, I want to hit 90% correct winners. Uh, 57 riding, so I, that means I can miss six and I'm okay. I think I'm going to be close to that tonight. Um, yeah. I, 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 I can't. I mean, I, there's one that I can't believe. Which, which one was it again? I, I don't remember. I had Waverly going blue. It looks mm. insane River going blue, but they were, those were toss-ups, so it's not that big a deal. Selkirk, I had going orange. And yeah. I, I have this wrong. So that's three. Well, thank you I to had, uh, Jacob Brosnia. Appreciate oui. it. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Very much appreciate that. Uh, I, I had River Heights going liberal, so that's four. Uh, I had Dauphin going. Uh, What's ninety percent? It's got to be fifty-one. Well, I, 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 I'm allowed to miss six, basically. Oh, okay. You're rounding up. Are a you? Bit, you but... Are you using your your, your uh, humanities calculator? There it is. It's you starting to, to get. It. I'm. It's starting to get a little like I'm worried about it. <laughs> uh, I looked it up. I could find it. I could only find it on Etsy. Really? I could Yeah, because this they don't sell this anymore. This it's is retro. This huh? yeah it. It seems to be from either the late 80s or the early 90s. So this is like 30 years old. It doesn't have square root, my friend. It doesn't have square root. That's how old it is. No one needs that. You don't need that. <clears throat> Who needs the square root of anything? When's the last time you used that in your life? Cosine, sine. I, I use square root in my model. I know. Yeah. The only cosines I've done was for an apartment lease. Um, oh, 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 that was a good one. Yeah. That's, that's why, folks, you come here. Yeah. You, stay, you stay here late. <laughs> the comedy stylings, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, how long are we gonna we gonna stick around here? I'm not sure what we're waiting for anymore. We're here all night. Try to veal. Yeah. Um, I've never understood that joke, but I laugh every time I hear it. It's because oh you're in God. a club. Oh wow, this person's really great. I can't see your full name, but it, merci it starts... beaucoup, Luke. There you merci go. Thanks Luke. very much. I appreciate that very much. Eat the veal is that it's from the old old clubs where you'd have the comedians who would go around and um, yeah, yeah. and 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 would always be at the same places and and yeah, people would. Anyway. It's just that I don't. The thing is. I laugh every time I hear it. I'll be all, here all week, try to veal. I don't understand why try to veal is such a funny line. I don't, but I, I laugh. So I guess you yeah. don't need to explain it, but. Yeah. I'm vegetarian. I don't eat veal, so. I'm a part-time vegetarian. Mm. Uh, that's nothing. I, uh... That's called a person <laughs> eating food. <laughs> that means I don't eat meat. When I don't eat meat. Yeah, that's what it, it doesn't mean anything. I hate people who said I'm a flexitarian. It's like, great, you're a human. I don't know what what's that means. A, what, hang on, what's a flexitarian? Exactly. It means someone who sometimes eats meat and sometimes doesn't. Like I said, that's people's uh, diet. It's not... Uh, anyway. <laughs> oh, okay. People want to call good. themselves something, I guess. A part-time vegetarian, though, is almost a vegetarian. I mean, basically, here's the rule. I... Uh, 
I don't have meat in my house. Ever. But I go to a restaurant, I'll get the steak. Okay. Right? But I don't eat meat at my house. Right. So th I guess that's... I don't... I, I have to look it up. Flexitarian, what's that? Does anybody know what a flexitarian is? That's what I said. It's someone who just sometimes is a vegetarian, sometimes isn't. Anyway, it bugs me. Sorry. If anybody's a flexitarian there... The flexitarian uh, diet is a flexible eating style that emphasizes the addition of plant or plant-based foods and beverages. Incorporate dairy and eggs and encourage meat to be consumed less frequently or in smaller portions. I don't okay. Know. Like I a guess. lot of... So some people are flexitarians they don't even realize it. Uh, because it's not a thing. Anyway, this we're getting off tangent here. Yeah, yeah, let's go back. <clears throat> Manitoba. Okay. Yeah. Web canoe. Congratulations. Yes. Well, why don't we do a, like a, a roundup uh, of of how things are going? So for the liberals, they're ending up right now. They're at twelve percent, and they've been kind of there for the for the whole night. So that's not too bad. Here we got someone else. Thanks very much, everybody. Really great. Um, we got eleven point nine percent. So that matches the forum poll. Uh, and, you know, they had 12% of the vote in 2007. They won two seats then. Um, so they're kind of matching that. But they're, the fact that they're going to drop down to one seat, they lose their leader, it's a setback for the liberals. And they just couldn't find a place in this in this campaign, right? It's this epic battle between the PCs and the NDP, and the liberals were just uh, pushed aside. There was, I think that's what happened to them. Sorry, I just saw it's a French guy on his Ford Vodka. He's not wrong, but uh, <laughs> I'm listening. Sorry, I'm listening. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we might have to cut it short soon before Larry. falls Thank over. Thank you, Larry. No, 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 I'm, I'm not drunk. I'm just really tired because yeah, I work yeah. too much. And they, it was it was a big one, too. So Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, sure, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but ahead. yeah, we're both... Uh, we're both uh... <clears throat> we both picked the over for the PCs, and the line was at 41. It looks like they're going to be around 42. Yeah. So uh, we were right. The NDP at 44 is the, I mean, that means that... Been on the all lower the end of the polls. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. But they had such high support among young voters. They had really high support in the pro poll among indigenous voters. That's a... That's uh, right. you know, they, who don't turn out in huge numbers. Uh, neither of those groups. Uh, so it was almost inevitable that they weren't going to be able to match the high 40s that they had in some of the polls. Yeah. Um, and for the PCs, uh, they're beating their polls a little bit, which you kind of expected because they were doing so much better among older people, but not by a huge amount. The polls were giving them a one-point yeah. lead, a two-point lead. Uh, so anyway, I think that's it's it, it's it's nice when things work out as you expect them to, right? There's no when you understand why things are not exactly what you were expecting. I find yeah. I was thinking about this earlier. I think that's the greatest value of what you know you and I do. Uh, especially you more now than I do. But when you set projections, when you track polls and this kind of stuff, and then when the results are a bit different, because they're always a bit different, it helps you understand what happened. Whereas yep. if you didn't have that baseline of what your expectations were, then you just look at the numbers and be like, oh, I guess this is, you don't have any, you need that that uh, that prior to judge the outcome of an election. I find that that's what's really helpful about it. And sometimes it's just wonky. Sometimes yeah. it's just cookie. And uh, sometimes that's some the results. answer. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes, like, oh, we missed that. That candidate was stronger than we thought. Or that region, the vote couldn't get out. Uh, I mean, th there are some people asking, how is the vote so close, yet the seat count not that close? And we made the call uh, like an hour ago. Well, the thing is, I, I think uh, when we, we, we have the full numbers and we break it down, I'm going to have an analysis of what happens. I think the PCs just crushed it in Southern Manitoba outside of Winnipeg and Brandon. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to go seat by seat by seat, but I, I think those places where they used to have 75%, maybe they got 72. <laughs> and so that really, really adds up at some point. But I mean, right now I see four seats in Winnipeg, four seats out of 32. You cannot win an election like this. Uh, especially considering you will lose the northern seats. So it, it doesn't add up, even though if you run up the score. And that's also something that the federal conservatives have learned. I mean, we, we, there much has been said about the fact that uh, Andrew Scheer and Aaron O'Toole won the popular vote. They won it by one point. It was not mm -hmm. a huge gap, but they run up the score. And in these some of these federal polls that uh, came out lately, uh, we see the, the CPC at 65% in Alberta, 60% in the prairies, 
that does not help them. <laughs> yeah. It just, you know, you just run up the score in places you don't need. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, yeah, the, and, and one of the other points, I, I brought it up earlier, that the NDP has formed a government since 1973 every time they hit at least 40% of the vote. Right. And it's happening here again. So, you know, the PCs were able to get a decent amount of their vote out, right? They're going to end yeah. up somewhere around 42%. But the fact that they couldn't get the NDP below 40% because the Liberals were too weak, uh, the Greens weren't there, um, that makes a big difference. Speaking of which, where, where are the Greens? I'm clicking on it. Well, you checked 0. 8%, that. 0. 8%. Are you saying Are you saying that the NDP has never reached 40% and lost? That's right. Really? Yeah. Okay. Since okay. 1973. Every time wow. they get over 40%, every loss... They've been below 40%. Every win, they've been above 40%. Oh, that's interesting. So it's more about where the NDP is than any other party. Because uh, the PCs, can, PCs generally also... Because uh, I have it here. The floor for the PCs has always been about 36%. They reached it in 1969, 2003, but they never dipped below that. Okay. Uh, so it matters more where the PC, where the NDP ends up being. So while that's we're looking at the other parties, 0.9% <clears throat> for the Keystone, 0.8% for the Greens. We said that uh, they wouldn't reach... Um, one percent and almost looks like it. Uh, it's not. Yeah, it's almost. But the communist point one. Two hundred and twenty-five votes for the communist. Yeah, they're holding on, holding on to the dream. Wow. Uh, so good for them. Um, history has passed them by, and they're fine with that. Um, <laughs> so I think I think maybe we could probably call it for now. I think we're. I think we've said all that. Do, does anybody have any questions? Uh, I'm afraid yeah, for Philip. I think he's got a class in the morning. No, 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 no. Yeah, I have a class tomorrow, but it's uh, it's 11 p.m. I'm, I mean, I, I wake up around 5:36. It's going to be all right. Let's do. A, if you have question for us, please write it in the uh, the comment section. And uh, while I'm asking for this, please check out our new podcast. Eric and I do a weekly <coughs> podcast. It's called the Numbers. And the numbers pod.ca or in French les chiffres dot point ca. Check it out. It's fun. It's, We're gonna do uh, uh, both of them this week. Yeah, exactly yeah. on Thursday. Um, it's, yeah. it's a it's a fun podcast. Uh, we don't take ourselves too seriously on the unlike others that we won't name. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it's it's uh, it's gonna you know it's. I think is I'm leaving. By the way, I'm leaving half my salary <laughs> at my college. <laughs> on the table because he loves politics so much all right yeah. i don't love. i hate politics i love the numbers i yes. love i love the the, the game politics that's true is, i'm that's never true. gonna i'm never gonna do politics roll the tape bookmark it i don't yeah. care i'm we'll see. never going to do politics. <clears throat> we did get this question did the ndp come close in any rural seats um so aside from the north uh so the ones so dauphin dauphin, dauphin i think they're, they're still good. pretty close yeah yeah they're still only behind by 60 votes um, Interleg Gimli, they are... They haven't called this one, huh? It's, 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 it's yeah, 30 or 46 polls, but I, I, it, they might be worried about where the votes are coming from mm -hmm. in a big riding like that. Uh, Dawson Trail, uh, they're not that close, 600 votes, 38% of the vote. Uh, Midland, they're not going to be anywhere close to there. They um, stopped counting in Brandon West, huh? Still six votes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Red River North, that was another one that thought maybe they could do okay. They're at 40%. So really, it's just Dauphin is the only rural seat that they're really getting close to. Because even Selkirk, Selkirk, I'm kind of surprised because there was no Liberal candidate. There was no Green. And they those two parties took a decent amount of the vote. Um, yeah, the strategist guys, the, they're, they're, they take themselves really seriously. They're, they don't know <laughs> um, <laughs> Especially one of them. You know who. Uh, yeah. Anyway, the, the fact that the PCs got 57%, which I think is going to be an increase. Because I think they had 51 or 52 percent of the vote in this is Selkirk. Yeah. So right. this is one of the writings where it looks like a lot of the liberal vote maybe went to uh, the PCs. So that's that's kind of an interesting result. That's right. Selkirk, Selkirk was 52 PC and 35 NDP. I wonder so, if we put all these, how many seats the PCs will actually have gone up. I'm guessing it's not going to be that many. The Greens had 7.6 and the Liberals had 5. So yeah, the hmm. non- NDP vote. That's a weird result. Yeah. It's hard to understand this one. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if the PCs are doing a lot better because the fact that they, you know, like they only dropped uh, five points. But I'm wondering if they've lost a lot in Winnipeg and outside yeah. of Winnipeg, they've actually held their vote or maybe you're even uh, going up. Uh, Looks like it. Although, I mean, in Selkirk, it's none of 25. It's not, it's not over. It could get closer. Yeah. But I, it, it would be a surprise if uh, the NDP pulls this off. Yeah, Which it is- does matter where the vote's coming in, because I remember looking at that one in detail. There's the town of Selkirk, where most of the people live, where the NDP does pretty well. And then all of the areas around it, the rural areas, are more PC territory. So it, it might depend on that. Uh, so if they manage to, because the close writings now, we got Brandon West, six votes for the NDP. Um Waverly is 83 votes for the NDP. Kildonan River East is 81. And Assiniboia is 7. So you can still see a scenario where they drop to 29. Um, but the PCs are only leading by 35 in Le uh, uh 59 in Dauphin, and 136 in Tuxedo. A couple of people in the, in the um, chat seem to suggest maybe the count is slowing down or they're having some issues. Uh, so well, hopefully. they have they have they have slowed down. We haven't had a change or add up. Yeah, you're right. It's been at while. seven to eight for a while, eh? Uh, yeah. We're gonna go to bed with half the ca- the votes counted. Yeah, that sounds risky, but I'm sure it'll be fine. <clears throat> it'll be okay. <laughs> I'm gonna check my phone at two a.m. <laughs> yeah, well, I still wanted sure. to write something and everything. Now it's, I'm gonna have to just say I can't because uh, I got my newsletter going out in the morning. At the writ.ca, but uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna have to. Um, I'm gonna have to. Uh, not. Wow, Selkirk. Yeah, that's that's a strange one. I had the uh, Selkirk as a toss-up going to the NDP, but uh, I thought the Green and Liberal vote. Yeah. My calculation was most of that vote would go to the NDP, and I think it held up in many places, uh, not in Selkirk. And someone is pointing. <laughs> We've been we've been talking about Kawatnuk having flipped over the NDP. The count in the vote is two for the NDP and two for the PCs. What? They're just giving really? it to them for the. Uh, uh, well, the, the 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 incumbent, I guess, right? What are they doing? Yeah, I think we're having some issues here. Having some so issues. It's, so it's tied. Okay. You know, someone so says there hasn't been an update since ten fifty ish. So that's like twenty minutes ago. Uh, so. But, when you're having fun, you don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I think, yeah, we're waiting because it has been at 7.08 here for a long time. So I don't know. Do you think maybe that means we should call it a night? Well, I know I should. <laughs> I, uh, again, I, I'm teaching a class at 9 a.m. Uh, I'm teaching uh, the uh, scientific revolution from Isaac Newton to Albert Einstein in astronomy. Um, and I'd like to be a little more, more uh, woken up than my students will be. Yeah. Uh, a little bright eyed and bushy tailed. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, then I think we're going to call it. It looks like uh, it still can end up being close. We'll both wake up in the middle of the night and, and check our phones. But I'm uh, gonna check for sure. I'm yeah. Gonna check. But it does look like the NDP because, you know, the seats that are close, there's also <laughs> close seats for the PCs. So it, it, David, the networks David haven't Fra- called it. Oh, man, we 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 kick so much ass. Or seriously, <laughs> or, or or we'll see. Um, all right. Yeah. I think we're going to call it, everybody. Hang on, hang on, no? hang on. Just, just a second. Yeah. They haven't called it. Yeah. So that means that they think that it's possible still that the PC flips five seats. Five or six seats, yeah. Or, yeah, six. Six, yeah. Uh, I mean, technically, uh, it's, it could happen. There's only four seats with, with the margin of less than 100 votes. Uh, all right, let's, 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 uh, let's give, it, let's give uh, Brandon uh, West to PCs. Yeah. The last exercise before we go to bed. Uh, Saint River, no. Um, Cinnaboya is the really close one, seven votes. Waverly is less than hundred votes. But a Cinnaboya was 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 re- It's only two polls reporting, so it's not that it's that close. Like this was a riding that the PCs won by less than ten yeah. points. Uh, Kirkfield Park, Kirkfield Park will be done. Hey, I chose that one. It's only a four-point gap or five-point gap. That's not bad. Not bad. Kildonan River East. Uh, how many votes have been counted there? Uh, about half of it. Uh, still pretty close. So I mean, that could go either way. Uh, I mean, you I could kind of so. see it, but it also means that they have to make sure they don't lose in Dauphin. They don't lose in Le Um 
I mean, I guess we could. It could still happen. I'm gonna wake up at two a.m. and it's gonna be twenty nine, twenty eight. Yeah. No, no, the liberal, the liberal has been elected. So twenty eight, twenty eight, one. Uh, yeah, you can get twenty eight, twenty eight, one. All right. I don't think that's gonna happen. Anyway, so I think we're all good. That we feel good about this. It's probably gonna be fine. If it isn't, this will be like a classic live stream of of two guys making asses of themselves because the results <laughs> weren't what it is. But. Uh, Either way, we had fun, which I think is the whole point, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, we uh, we uh, we thank you everybody for being there. Thanks for your comments, and I, I did I could not read the whole thing, but yeah. I read many of them, and I appreciate very much. Uh, and also, thanks for your donations. Please check out our respective websites. Yeah. And check out our podcast. We record on Thursday morning, and for those who register to become patrons, you can have access early access to the to the podcast. And soon it will be the only way to have access to the podcast. Every so. two weeks. Every two weeks. Every two weeks, yes. Yeah. So uh, please register and thank you again. Merci, Eric. Yes, thank you, Philippe. And thanks you all for watching. And uh, stay up and see what the final results will be. Uh, but uh, we appreciate that you stayed up with us. So good night, everybody. 28-28-1. <laughs>